Well, guys, last time I did this video, I was crying, but this one's going to be a long one. I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys the story from start to finish of what's going on and, frankly, prove to you why no female, no female should ever, ever be allowed to be a judge or, as far as I'm concerned, have any sort of power and work around children and families in government with any type of power. And I'm going to explain to you why, and then you can argue with me in the comments why maybe I'm just the victim and nobody else is. But it's funny because there's a ton of Facebook groups and stuff around the internet with people with stories similar to mine, but not as bad. Mine's pretty shocking. Wait till you hear this story. So, little background on who I am. Well, how this all started, um, I'm a jack of all trades. I was a volunteer fireman for two years. I was a mechanic. I've done construction, plumbing. Um, I worked in the adult industry as well. That's part of the bias from these females of what I'm going through. Um, I've done it all, folks. I'm 43 years old. I have four kids. My kids are five, or four, five, 12, and I have a three-month-old. Um, I have uh, my ex-wife from Thailand, the three years. My current wife of Thailand for 10 years that I'm going through this nasty custody and divorce case with. And, um, hold on a minute. Okay, and I have my fiance that has been with me over a year now since about a month after my separation um, and my false arrest with my current wife. I traveled 10 countries for 10 years. I semi-retired when I was, oh, I mostly retired when I was 30 years, well, right when I was 29, turning, before I was turning 30. I moved to Thailand. Well, I went there on a two-month holiday first. Saw it was everything I thought it was that my friends that moved from America, moved there, told me it was. It was party town. Came back, sold everything after a two month holiday. And then when I turned 30, I was living there. Uh, I lived there for six years, full time. Um, traveled 10 countries in 10 years. I, I, I lived in multiple countries. I lived in Cambodia, I lived in Vietnam, traveled through Laos. I've been to Japan. Uh, then I moved to Latin America for three years, Peru, Ecuador, and Panama. I, I, I've been around the world. I've been around the block and then some folks. I got a lot of experience. Um, I got a lot of experience with women. I won't go into details about my profession in the adult industry. For those of you that know who I am, you know what I'm talking about. But let me tell you, I am a sort of, I, I, was, I would be what you would call a expert witness when it comes to anything female. Let me tell you that. Not, just from my experience in life. So anyways, um, when I got divorced with my ex thai wife with my first daughter um i got remarried to the current wife and she had a daughter that she abandoned in thailand because she's an irresponsible prostitute that was working in a whorehouse when she turned 18 and i wanted to save her away from that life and help her i ended up falling in love with her marrying her and leaving thailand with her we went to laos cambodia vietnam we lived in vietnam for like six months the corrupt U.S. government they didn't tell us this when we booked our flight to Mexico um, with my daughter and my second Thai wife that you need a transient visa to step off the airplane and get onto another airplane on American soil. It's all corruption. It's money. So we got stuck in Vietnam for like six months living there. We finally found a flight to Peru and we had a layover in Brazil and we got to Peru. We lived in Peru on and off for three years. Uh, we lived very shortly in Ecuador, in Montanita, alone, Salinas. Um, then we decided to move to Bocas del Toro, Panama, which is a group of islands out in the middle of the ocean off of Costa Rica and Panama. We lived there for more than a year. Loved it. It was beautiful. A little dangerous, but beautiful. Then we ended up moving back to uh, Lima, Peru. And at my age, um, 
my wife was pregnant with my son, I made the resp- I, I swore I'd never come back to this shithole, corrupt country that is America. I swore I'd never do it. With, with my experience, I've heard the child support, alimony, food stamps, EBT, welfare stories of, from the gold digging, you know what, that, that stabbed the father in the back umpteen times. I've heard it too many times. The reason I got married with the first wife and had a kid because it was in Thailand. They don't have those laws and rules there. And I thought the women had a different uh, approach on life, but apparently they don't. And we'll get into Thai Buddhist culture another day, but that's a whole nother video. Um, most ignorant people in the world, basically. Um, lie, cheat, and steal for Buddha. Buddha tell them to lie. They lie, 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 lie. They're compulsive liars. You can never change them. The, if you're not Thai, they don't listen to you. They think foreigner, dumb, and stupid. Their national anthem even says it. Anyways, trust me, married the two of them for 13 years. Anyway, so I'm going to continue with this. Um, I made a decision in Peru to uh, trust this wife that I've been with all these years and get her a visa and bring her to the United States. Big mistake. Rule number one, never trust them. So I trust this woman. Now, my son could have been born in any country in the world. And I get a U.S. citizenship and a U.S. passport, right? Uh, I just go to the embassy and register it because I'm a U.S. citizen. I didn't need to bring him to the United States to get him a U.S. citizenship and U.S. passport. I already had one for my previous daughter from the previous marriage, too. But I made the responsible decision as a father because of my age that if I drop dead, here I am with a Thai wa- my second Thai wife, with a Thai daughter from my first wife that she believed was her real mother, by the way. Um, And I'm about to have another child. They have American citizenships, American passports, but they can't come to America because the mother only has a Thai passport and no visa. So she would have to take these American kids back to Thailand and who knows what kind of future they will have. If you know any of the history of Thailand, the majority of what goes on there. Um, So I made the responsible decision of father to trust this woman, come back to the United States, bring her here, set up a life here, live here. Our plan was to live here for three to five years and then go travel the world with the kids again. I hate this place. I don't want to be here. She didn't want to come here. She doesn't want to stay here. And um, that was the plan. For those of you that might not understand it, a lot of the countries we traveled have no property tax, no income tax, no sales tax. You could do whatever you want. Uh, if you get pulled over for doing something, a traffic violation, it's a dollar to $15 cash to the police officer. You drive away. It's truly a free country outside of the United States. You don't have all this BS. You pay your rent, your electric, your everything to your landlord in one shot. Um, and that's all you have for stress for the month to worry about. You got nothing to worry about. You pay one bill every month. All your bills are paid. You don't, you don't have any stress, the rat race, the, the hustle, the bustle and the, the go and the stop and the, the bills and all the stuff we have here, the nine to five job and the taxation that when you live outside the U S and you don't have that life, you never want to come back here. Um, matter of fact, in Thailand, they have in Pattaya and Jomti in the two big cities there, um, they have what's called the fly high club. And every day it's foreigners jumping out of the top of buildings committing suicide because the foreigners don't want to go home. They'd rather literally jump out of an airplane or out of a, out of a building and commit suicide than go back to their country and have to pay all, all the stuff and deal with all the stuff. And foreigners commit suicide every day there, jumping out of buildings. So anyways, fast forward to um, uh, me, me bringing... Uh, my pregnant wife, my daughter of the United States, would get here. I had an internet business that wasn't making much money. It was starting to get a little bit better. It was enough to survive. Um, and uh, I'm good at buying and fixing and selling things and flipping stuff. I'm a mechanic. I, I can fix anything. You know, cars, boats, RVs, pickup trucks, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, and I'm good at doubling and tripling my money and stuff like that. We came to the U.S., we bought an old truck, we bought an old RV, we moved into it, we started flipping stuff and flipping stuff and flipping stuff, and, you know, came up in life, 
Um, we moved all over the state of Florida. I I'm not going to get into specifics about where we lived and what we did. Was, just make the video longer. But anyway, so what ended up happening was uh, we moved to Orlando and uh, my wife, married of 10 years that I trusted with my life, literally had everything in her name, including the Florida titles to the mobile home that was worth $100,000 paid off that I had bought um got americanized we call it americanized she turned into a feminist gold digging backstabbing you know what that i can't even say or i'll be banned and what ended up happening was there was an obese black african-american woman across the street in the drug house across the street the whole neighborhood knows you can smell the ganja coming out of that house every day um it's, she's a drug trafficker. She's a drug addict. She gets her autistic son high and drunk every day. Um, my wife started to become friends with her. This woman was in her ear. This woman is a leech of the government, collects food stamps, child support, alimony, EBT, her whole entire life. She She's just a leech is what this woman is. Hold on. Somebody's coming by with a four-wheeler. So anyways, um, talking about the neighbor, her name is Michelle Gillum. You can look her up in the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. Uh, uh, no, the Osceola County Court Records um, website. Put her name in there. She's been arrested just in Osceola County in Orlando here for possession of cocaine, possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia, possession of... Uh, and, and child neglect. I went down to the courthouse and got a copy of her police report where there's a heartbroken story there from the police officer about the children malnourished, cockroaches in the refrigerator, no food to eat. They had to call DCF to remove the children from her. And there was, you know, drugs and all this stuff. That was just one arrest, by the way. Um, if you look her up in Illinois, um, she's got a big criminal record there. So does her husband, Tony McNamee. Um, I think it's spelled with two E's. You can look it up and find it on Google. Um, they have an autistic son that they get high and drunk every day. He's handicapped. That's handicap abuse. DCF will do nothing about it. I'll get into that later. Um, so my wife becomes friends with these people. I'm kind of acquaintances with them because they're my neighbors, whatever. They used to come to our barbecues once in a while, whatever. But our next door neighbor, two doors over, her name is Katia from Costa Rica. Uh, she had a son. I won't even say his name. His son, her son, uh, she used to drop at our house all the time. We used to babysit him. Uh, by the way, to... I forgot to mention, I also had a daughter with this woman. So now I had, at the time, was three kids. I had my daughter, my son, and my original daughter from the last wife. So this woman, two doors over, used to leave her kid, thinking we were her free babysitters at the house all the time. And uh, we were making good money. And I literally had annual passes to Disney, Universal, um, SeaWorld, Busch Gardens, all the water parks, Kennedy Space Center, um alligator farm alligator world whatever you call it i mean these kids had the perfect life that's why we moved to orlando my daughter was in florida virtual she did the whole school year in like three four months perfect grades you know we on a daily basis are going out to parks and, and water parks and amusement parks and, and the kids had a perfect life but meanwhile my thai wife lie cheat steal for buddha would always steal money from me. I send money every single month to that woman's family and supported them in Thailand and supported her daughter that she abandoned there 10 years ago that she hasn't seen for 10 years. I was the guy that said every week, have you called your daughter or your family this week and checked up on them? Hey, is it that time of the month that we need to send some money? She's the most irresponsible. I, I won't even get into it. Irresponsible is the word. A little month's ignorant and a bunch of other things. She's not a mother. She's irresponsible. She doesn't care about nothing. They have a saying in Thailand. They flick their hair and they go, my belay. My belay is like, I don't care. And they go like this and they flick their hair. All the Thais do it. This is their attitude on life and everything, including their children. And I dealt with it for 10 years. And I also dealt with the stealing of money for 10 years. No matter how much she needed every month and I sent it, she always found a way to stash away some cash and send an extra Western Union payment behind my back. And the last time I caught her in Panama City Beach, two years before this incident, I had got 
They didn't get her family on the phone. And I told her family, you taught her this lying Buddha bullshit. You unteach it to her. Because the next time she steals our money behind my back, I'm divorcing her. She can go back to Thailand and steal all your money there. And you'll never see a penny from us again. Well, that's exactly what happened. It's an old saying, you never cut off the Asian family's uh, stream of income. Uh, in, the, in Thailand, in these countries, there's something called a dowry. For those of you who don't know what a dowry is, it's a lump sum payment to the parents that you have to pay to marry their daughter. And I refuse to pay that. I ain't paying for no woman. I didn't pay it. But I did support her family. And I knew, and it's well known, as soon as you cut the family off, they see, it's the opposite of a, a, us here in the Western world. We take care of our kids. Over there, the kids take care of the parents. It's completely ass backwards. So the, the kids will disown the, the, the she would disown her child before she disowned her mother if if that makes any sense to you it's backwards in here so you know here we would disown our mother before we disowned our own child over there it's different so anyways what ended up happening was um the next door neighbor let me back up a little bit the next door neighbor katia uh she told everybody that she had a living uncle or something from Costa Rica that was living in her house. It was a double wide mobile home. Inflation hit with Joe Biden. The market went through the roof. Everybody's mobile home that was worth like 50 grand was now worth almost a hundred. Um, apparently that was not her uncle. Well, it's not apparent. It, it wasn't her uncle. We found out it was her live-in boyfriend, but she didn't want anybody to know it was her boyfriend because she was messing around on him. So she comes over to her house one day. Remember, we used to free babysit her kid all the time. She used to dump her kid, her kid at our house. She comes over and says, hey, if you see that guy that was living with me all this time around, call the police and call me. I say, what? And my, my wife at the time gets to hear all this. She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he caught me with another guy and he got all jealous and this and that. I said, well, wait a minute. You said that was your uncle, not your boyfriend. Well, he was kind of, we were having a little relationship. He wasn't really my uncle. Yeah, lie, 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 lie. So anyways, uh, uh, then we find out the true story. that She got a restraining order against him, an injunction, to get him out of the house. Nothing to do with the cheating or anything else. It was all a scheme to steal the house, the money behind the house. She, she claimed domestic violence. She got a, an injunction. She got a restraining order. She got him evicted out of his own home. His name wasn't on the title. They weren't married. He's fucked. So she stole the house from him. Now, my wife knew about that. That was one of the reasons why she did what she did. She was also being coached by the neighbor across the street, the black crackhead, that was always over borrowing $5 and $2 and $10 and telling her and also knew that the titles were in her name and that we were getting ready to sell. I call a realtor out. I got her approved for a home loan through Bank of America. And I says, listen, we're going to go buy some land. We're going to buy two pieces of property fix them up, double, triple our money on them. We'll live in one while we're fixing the other one. And we're going to sell this one in the meantime and go live in one of those that we're going to buy, the land, because we didn't own the land. The land was rented. It was in a mobile home park. So um, I call a realtor out. The realtor comes out. He says, well, I can get you 85000 I can list it for 85000 and get you 80000 within a week. It's probably worth more than a hundred, but because of uh the age of the mobile home uh we can't get insurance on it if you can't get insurance on it you can't get a, a mortgage so it'd have to be a cash deal you're probably only going to end up getting 80. so he left and i said to my wife i says you know what i'm going to and i took her and the kids to walmart i got for sale signs um and i said i'm going to list it for 120 for sale by owner on facebook all over the internet Put signs outside and I'll get 100000 cash for it with no realtor and not have to pay a realtor watch. Or even if I get 80 or 90, I don't have to pay a realtor. I'll sell it cash on my own. We go down to Walmart, we get the signs. This was like four days before all the shit kicked off. So now fast forward back to uh, four days later. Um, I come in one night and find out that she's sexting with some guy. Sending explicit imagery back and forth and sexual conversations with some guy on her phone behind my back. As I dig deeper, I also find out she's been stealing money again, giving it to Katya next door. She gives me the phone. She says, I don't ever want a phone again. I can't be trusted, all this shit. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done with you. I want a divorce. I'm done with you. 
And uh, I said, I'm going to make sure that none of my money ever goes to your family again. I warned you. I warned your family enough times. The lie she's still for Buddha, I've had it. I'm done. So as soon as you cut off the money to Thailand, this is what happens. She drums up this ingenious idea to have me arrested for domestic violence. She has me arrested for domestic violence. On top of having me arrested for domestic violence, she tells the police that she took 10 or 12 pills and tried to kill herself. She didn't know that they were going to Baker Act her ass. For those of you who don't know what a Baker Act is, they put her in a mental institution against her will and force her. It's like taking her to jail, but they take her to a loony bin. So they take me to jail. I think the police knew. I know the police knew that I didn't hit her and that it was all bullshit because the cop was really nice. He let me charge my phone in his patrol car for an hour. And he says, listen, once your phone's charged, I'll take you out of the handcuffs in the in the temporary lockup. I'll let you make some phone calls, but you got a no contact order automatic. And it includes no third party contact, which means you can't go around and call somebody to call your wife. I said, that's no problem. I just want to call my family and lawyers. So he allows it. When he gives me the phone, the phone rings. It's an African-American DCF officer named Jessica Scott. And she's telling me that she's at Michelle Gillum's house across the street, the big obese black American, African-American crackhead, the total freaking leech loser, and that she is going to, uh, she's been instructed, by my, my wife is being Baker acted. There's nobody there to take care of the three young children. At the time, my children were three, four, and 11 years old. And that my wife has instructed her to leave the kids in Michelle Gillum's house. And I say, absolutely not. But I didn't want to break the beans to her of why and rat these people out in case they did put them in there and cause the kids to be in more danger. So I said, look, it's not a safe place. I don't want my kids there. I'll call some family up and they'll come down. So they did. That's what happened. The following day, my family had to leave. So the kids had to go back to the crack house across the street with the crackhead. So meanwhile, I'm calling Jessica Scott from jail. Going, look, I'm getting a Raymond tomorrow. I'm going to be released from jail. Um, you know, I want my kids. Uh, they told me I have a one-time order to go with the sheriff and get some stuff from the house. I said, I want to also get the kids and the kids stuff. The kids were across the street at Michelle's house. And I could tell by the tone in her voice, she was telling me that this, she was going to set this up, but she wasn't going to allow it, even though she was saying she was going to. Because she's looking at me as the woman beater. It's... The, the, and I could also see that she was a feminist lesbian, by the way. A man hater. So anyways, what ends up happening is I bail out of jail. I get arraignment the next day. I bail out of jail that night. She cuts her. She tells me her phone's on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, I can call her at any time. She'll be available. Nope. Blow up her phone. Nothing. I get an Uber. I go to a hotel. I'm basically homeless and broke in the street. I'm right out of jail. And the next morning, I call her. She says, okay, yeah, go ahead. Call the sheriff, go down there, and, you know, they'll give you your kids from across the street. And I told her, those people are not going to voluntarily give me my kids. I believe there's a big scheme involved, which there was, that they're involved in all this, and they're also trying to assist my wife in stealing the money behind the house, and they're going to get a cut of it. So that's exactly what happened. We get to the house. I don't get the kids. So... Um, at this point, I spilled beans. I say, listen, you guys messed up. You put my kids in the local crack house with the local drug addicts, and drug traffickers. You guys out of your mind or what? They don't believe me. Oh, we background checked her. Or no, they didn't say background check. They said, we searched the house. We looked around. We didn't see anything. So are you kidding me? The whole house is full of paraphernalia everywhere all the time. Um, they never even went in the house. I know they didn't. I'll get to the background check in a minute because that came a little later. So then she goes, well, I need you to get a monitor before I can give you the kids. It's somebody that we need to background check to make sure they don't have any criminal history and that they're safe around the children. And they're going to need to live with you and the children for two weeks at all times and be with you in the car with the children. They cannot leave you and the children alone because we believe that you're a danger to your own children because you've been arrested for domestic violence. And I told them, I never touched my wife. It's all bullshit. But this is what the game they're playing. So I have a family member come up and he signs the paperwork that background checked him. 
So when they asked for the background check on him, I asked him, I said, did you background check Michelle Gillum, by the way? Oh yeah, we background checked her. Bullshit. Go look in the county record. They did not background check that woman or Tony McNamee, her husband. He's got an extensive criminal record too for drugs. And this woman, like I said, has an extensive record for not only drugs, but child neglect. She's been arrested for. So anyways, um, back to my story. Um, my family member comes up. He signs a safety. Well, whoa, 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 let me back up. The only way that this happened, I forgot to tell you, because she cut the phone on me, off on me that day, and she they thought it was bullshit. I had a, a Katia and another neighbor that lived behind me that was a grandmother that had kids and grandkids and her husband calling Jessica Scott from DCF and leaving her messages and text messages and voicemails saying, look, he's not lying. You guys fucked up. That's the local crack house. You need to get the kid, his kids out of there. She ignored, and I was in contact with both of them throughout the day from 11 in the morning till, I don't know, 11 at night, 10 o'clock at night when I finally gave up on calling and texting and leaving voicemails. She completely ignored me and the neighbors. So the next morning I went down to the, like by the Twin Towers where the big buildings are in the city of Orlando where the main office is for Child Protective Services. Uh, Department of Children and Families, whatever you want to call it. COVID, the office is ransacked. There's a phone there. There's nobody there. It says, call some number. I call. They get on the phone. They call down to Kissimmee. Then my phone rings. It's Jessica Scott. She says, come down to Kissimmee for an interview. I was so pissed. I says, I'm going to sue the shit out of all of you. You personally, the state of Florida and DCF. You don't get my freaking kids out of that crack house right now. So they said, come down to Kissimmee, come for an interview. I walk into the interview with a high-end lawyer on speakerphone saying, I'm going to sue all of you. I got a lawyer on the phone on speaker right now. We're going to do this interview with my lawyer present on speaker. I wasn't playing games. I was pissed. I spilled the beans on everything. Everything to do with our lifestyle, our business, what we do, who she is, who I am, everything. They know everything. The truth of everything. So, um, remember, my, my wife was in the adult industry on her own free will, doing selfie adult videos and everything else. There's all documents behind it, federal documents, state documents, model releases, 2257, UFC, 2257, federal documents, video releases. I told her everything. She knew everything. Her and her boss. So her boss, Kendra Jenkins, how conveniently doesn't work there anymore, her supervisor is another African-American female. Her boss, Cheyenne Henry, is another African-American female. So, yeah, I'm not talking like a racist. There's something going on here, folks. You got three African-American women. Wait till you hear what they've done. They left my kids in an obese African-American food stamp collecting welfare child support, the whole nine yards, leech of the system, drug addict, drug trafficker that gets her autistic son high and drunk every day, okay? They wake up and they smoke a doobie in the morning on the screen porch, the whole neighborhood can smell it before the husband goes and works um, in the office. He works maintenance in the office. She sits on her fat ass all day and does nothing, okay? So anyways, here's what happens. Um... That's when they said about the monitor, my family come up, he signed the paper, they got the kids out of the crack house. We told them, listen, we're going to Miami. We're not staying here. We went down to Miami. They put it on the safety plan. They agreed to it. There's another four-wheeler going by. Um, so they agreed to it. They knew we were going to Miami. I now have possession and power over the kids. Since I'm married, the way it works in the state of Florida, it's 50-50 custody. But if one parent chooses to keep the parent, the children from the other parent, there's nothing you could do unless there's a family court judge involved and a court custody case. DCF knows this. Unless there's a danger to the children. So we went down to Miami on the safety plan and they tell me, you're going to sit on a safety plan for up to two weeks. We'll try to release the safety plan before two weeks and then you'll be free to go with your kids. Meanwhile, they're colluding with my wife. She gets out of... Baker Act out of the mental hospital. She doesn't know what to do. She's asking DCF for help. I get 
my criminal tr trial lawyer to go into the criminal case, file a motion for me to be allowed to go back to the house and get the children's belongings. We go in front of the judge. This is like, I want to say three weeks into this, me having the kids. And they couldn't do anything. Oh, so let me back up. Two weeks into it, they finally release a safety plan, release him as a monitor. But they argue with me and they try not to do it. And they say, well, your wife wants the kids back. We need to give the kids back to the wife. I said, no, you don't. And no, you can't. You don't tell me what I'm going to do with my kids. I know the law. I have lawyers involved. You have no authority. You're, you, you now can see there's no danger to my children. You have to release the monitor. You have to let me go free with my children. It's none of your business what I damn do. I was at war with these people. So they were, they were pissed. I have the kids now, Mr. Woman Beater. What I didn't know, they were also accusing me of sex trafficking my wife. Oh, it's the woman beater sex trafficker. Oh, yeah? Sex trafficking my wife 10 years? Sure. For, you remember where I met her, right? She worked in a whorehouse <laughs> when she turned 18. Uh, they said I forced the court. They made up all kinds of shit in the court. It all got thrown out of court. I'll get to that later. So, anyways, um, the woman beating sex trafficker that they're calling me, libeling and slandering me all over the place, which I didn't know also on court documents and DCF records, um, has the kids and he's on a win. And I told them I'm going to file for a divorce and full custody. I'm going to win. I'm going to go to the jury, go get a jury trial, not guilty. I'm going to win. And it's, it's done. I'm going to get my house back, get my kids, you know, F you. Oh, they were pissed. You got all the, you got these three black, um, African-American feminist man-hating females, my wife, and I can't tell you how many, there's probably 50 or a hundred other females in the system at this point that have lied, committed perjury and been on her side. That's what this video is about. Wait till you hear it. Wait till you hear this. So I hire a feminist bull dyke, lesbian, boy haircut, dresses like a man, lawyer and I think well if she sees the story and believes it she's going to get pissed off and turn against her own kind generally feminists do that they're going to be pissed off at another woman for doing this stuff to a man when it's wrong but the problem is I only paid her five grand that's all I had and this was a lot bigger case than five grand she got in over her head so in the beginning it was all right but I ended up having to fire her and I've been pro se for several months now I'll get to that later so what ends up happening is she files for divorce. She files for custody. Oh, well, let me back up. So I went to the house. I got the children's belonging. That was like three weeks in. Now we're almost two months into this. We got a speedy trial coming up in front of a jury, not guilty on all counts. It was three charges. My wife, DCF, get help now shelter involved, painting her as a domestic violence victim, bunch of man-hating feminists. They get Jennifer Watson and Sarah Vance, the IFP attorneys for the state and help now. Their injunction for protection, IFP attorneys. That's all they do every day in that courthouse, in the Kissimmee courthouse. Now the Kissimmee courthouse, they have three judges that rotate, all the family court cases and all the injunction cases. So each of those three family court judges uh, rotate week on, week off and share the cases that come in for divorces and restraining order injunctions. So um, these two uh, lawyers strictly work injunctions, know the three judges, which also work in the divorce cases and know them very well. These women are like the mafia of the system. They are well connected, know all the DCF officers, all the little tricks, all the little bells, all the little whistles, all the people to pay off, all the people to get to libel and slander and forge documents and commit perjury. They know how to do all of it. They've been doing it for decades in this courthouse. That's Jennifer Watt, Jennifer Jane Watson and Sarah Vance, the two lawyers. You can look them up. One is uh, Jennifer Watson is an old lesbian, like probably in her 60s. It's a man-hating feminist. Her partner in crime that she works with every day is a, is a little obese uh, lesbian with no hair. Man-hating lesbian with no hair. Feminist. And they bury men every day. That's what they do. They ruin families and ruin men. I would, uh, it's unfortunate because there are victims of domestic violence out there. But from what I've seen, there's more 
fake victims of domestic violence out there than there is real ones. And these women should not be representing women that they know are a fake victim. But they do. They don't care because they're collecting your tax money by the hour. That's right, folks. Everybody from DCF to these lawyers are collecting your tax money. You are funding this mess. And I'm going to explain to you what you funded. And you're continuing to fund. So um, they start libeling and slandering me all over DCF records, making false accusations against me. They call me a drug addict. I didn't know this at the time. I had no clue. Neither did my lawyer. They called me a drug addict. They called me a groomer. They said I was coaching the children. They said I was filming my wife without her knowledge in adult material and selling her adult services and material online without her knowledge. That would imply what? That would imply that I was using a, like a hidden camera in the toilet, right? This woman is literally famous all over the internet doing selfies talking into the camera with no clothes on. It was a complete bullshit lie. Jessica Scott goes and signs a sworn affidavit, which I'm still going to sue her for, that just affected my, uh, my kid's custody case two days ago again. She goes and signs a sworn affidavit under penalty of perjury, stating all the, these allegations are factual and true. Okay? She's committed perjury. So what ends up happening is um, my divorce lawyer files for the divorce. It's got to hit the case docket on the website. Then she can file motions in the case. The following day, she files uh, an emergency motion for temporary child custody during the proceedings of the divorce. I had all three kids for two months already. What we didn't know is this sworn affidavit and what DCF had done and what, what they did in the background and all the shady shit they did. What they did was they had already went in front of Diego Judge Diego Magigal III, which works injunctions and divorce, and went and filed for an injunction two months into this. Now, people that file for injunctions are supposed to be feared for their life and danger of being harmed, right? I wasn't even living in the county. Um... I had the kids for two months. Obviously, I'm not going to do nothing stupid and go beat up my wife. It was a joke. There was no reason for an injunction. Zero. Okay? But they lied to this judge. They made all these accusations about me two months into this because I had the kids and I was on a win. And they got Diego Magigal III to sign an injunction order and a removal of children in full custody to her. They had ordered the sheriff to find me and take the kids from me. She gets full custody and this injunction restraining order go in place. Pretty corrupt, huh? Oh, I haven't even got started. Wait till you hear this. <clears throat> Diego Magigal III gets the emergency removal of children and he, sets a mo he denies it and sets a motion to show cause for contempt. And in there, he says... Contrary to you and your lawyer's allegations of her being a druggie and a, and a prostitute and all this crazy stuff, it's the father that DCF is most worried about, and they've signed this sworn affidavit under penalty of perjury saying all this stuff. It's the father this, the father that. And because you've lied to the court, we're going to go ahead and set you a motion to show cause to come in front of me and tell me why I shouldn't throw you and your lawyer in jail. My lawyer's flipping out. What did you get me into? And I told her from day one, don't worry about it. Nothing's going to happen. It's not true. We haven't done anything wrong, which is exactly what happened, right? Wait till you hear where I'm at now. So he sets a motion to show cause hearing. My lawyer says, listen, you got to turn over the kids. I was in uh, Melbourne or Vero Beach or somewhere, somewhere on the West Coast. Um, or should I say the East Coast? And uh, she says, you got to turn over the children. That was the other thing he said. He said in his motion to show cause that he had already ordered this removal of children. So I said, all right. I called DCF. Kendra Jenkins, the supervisor, the one that instructed Jessica Scott, was working with all these other African-American female leftist feminist man haters. And I said, listen, I don't know. I need to call, I'll call the sheriff and I need to meet you down at DCF and I guess I got to turn over the two younger children to you and you got to turn them over to my wife. 
she gets nasty with me on the phone and she said, no, 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 you tell me where you're at right now and I'm going to send the police out and we're going to remove all three kids. I said, excuse me? How are you going to remove my 11-year-old daughter? I haven't done anything. She hasn't done anything. None of your business. You have to turn over your 11-year-old daughter. She's a real bitch, right? And I said, no, you're not going to take my three and four-year-old and strap them in some government car and some government car seat across the state having them scream and cry. We're going to do this humane. I'll bring the kids down to you in Kissimmee at your office, have the sheriff, and you call the wife ahead of time, have her around the corner so my kids don't get upset. She wouldn't agree to it. She didn't care. They do not care about anybody's children, any of these women that work in government. It's bullshit. And wait till you hear the rest of my story. You'll agree. So what ends up happening is I don't agree it. And I said, well, take it or leave it. I'll be there at this time. You can call the sheriff and I'll be there with the kids. I bring all three kids. I pack them lunches. I pack their clothes. We show up at DCF. I have a family member come over to, as a witness to go with me. When we get there, the Osceola County Sheriff's Office come out. Uh, Deputy Lennon. I'm going to subpoena him. He's a witness to a lot of this. Um, Deputy Lennon comes out, serves me the injunction papers. They, they take the kids in the back office of DCF, all three kids. And the whole time I keep asking them, including Kendra Jenkins on text, I have all the text messages, text message on the phone, uh, Giselle, another corrupt DCF officer. I'll get into that. That's a whole nother story. I covered up the child abuse of my daughter. That's another thing I forgot to tell you. We found out that my wife had been physically abusing my daughter for, I can't tell you how many years, punching her in the face, arms and legs, hitting her in the head with a hanger in front of my son and DCF covered it all up. Cover, they, they said that uh, I had coached her and told her to say that. They've been protecting the abuse of the children on behalf of the mother since day one. And it continues to this day. I had a child counselor get involved. She has four full written reports. You can find on uh, the web pages I've made. Uh, keeps getting insubmissible in court. They won't let her testify. She's been counseling the children and documenting the abuse for over a year. She's made DCF uh, complaints and everything else. DCF's a joke. They just cover it up. Bunch of corrupt feminist females. They hate my guts. I'm trying to think where we are. Fast forward. Okay, so we're, we bring the kids to the office. They serve me this. They get the kids in the back. And I, I keep asking, you know, what are your grounds to take my daughter, first of all? Second of all, I know Florida state law says that a family member, you have to give the ki my, my oldest daughter to a family member before you go put her in foster care. I have a family member sitting next to me and I have other family in the state. They wouldn't talk to me. They wouldn't tell me nothing. They, they refused to even, they violated my rights and my family's rights to have first dibs on the taking care of the kid before they completely remove her and put her in foster care with a dependency case that could take a year to get her back. <coughs> so the deputy sitting next to me says, well, I can't leave and you can't leave yet. Be and he's on the phone with Kendra Jenkins and on the phone with the DCF attorney for two to three hours. Because he says, you can't leave yet because DCF has a TIC order. That's how they were taking my other daughter to remove all three children in a separate order in a DCF dependency case. Um, but it's in Bavard County, not in Osceola County. And they need to go and get it amended here and make one in Osceola County. So they're doing this for two or three hours. They, and I, I, I heard it all. It's all there. I think it's on body camera, matter of fact. And they go in front of this judge. They get all the birth dates and the ages wrong of the children. So I say, what? The judge says, no, it's all wrong. They send it back. They send it to the attorney for DCF. Kendra Jenkins is calling the, the police officer and sitting next to me. There, he's talking back. I can hear everything that's going on. This goes on for like two, three hours. They go back in front of the judge. Wrong birthday, wrong. Um, ages again. I say, what? So the judge tells him, listen, if you don't get it right... The third time, I'm not signing this today. We'll do it tomorrow. I'm done playing games. You're DCF, you're a lawyer, you can't get ages and birthdays right. Sorry. He was pissed. So I could hear Kendra going off the deep end and everybody in DCF to instructing the attorney to get it right this time. They get it right two, three hours later, the deputy gets the papers, he serves them to me. I'm reading the papers, figuring out how they took my daughter away, my oldest daughter. And it's had all these crazy allegations with the, you know, 
the uh, under penalty of perjury affidavit where Ken, uh, Jessica Scott committed perjury, and it says in there that uh, they could they could not locate me, they could not contact me, and they could not ensure the safety of the children. And because of these allegations, they believe that I'm a drug addict beating my children and a child abuser and all this other stuff. That they can't check the children, they need to remove the children from me. I'm uh, I'm a, I'm a bad dad, right? And I'm reading this crap, and I said to the deputy, I looked at the officer, and I said, you just assisted them to commit perjury, and you guys just committed perjury in front of a judge, in front of the police that assisted you to commit perjury, because we've been sitting in your goddamn office this whole time. And you told the judge you didn't know where I was, and you couldn't contact me. I said, I'm going to sue the shit out of all of you. Giselle slams the door in my face, goes in the back. I guess she called Kendra. I start texting and calling Kendra about it. Next thing I know, they bring my daughter back out from the back room. They say, here's your daughter. Go home. And they give the other two kids to the mother. There was a whole sham and a whole scam to get the kids from me and assist my wife even further in her fraud that she had drummed up from the moment I got arrested. So I'm dumbfounded. I'm like, what the hell? So I got my daughter. I go to a criminal trial. She comes in with her bright purple haired lesbian lawyer, Betta Colazzo. That's right, folks. Bright purple haired lesbian lawyer, Betta Colazzo. Jennifer Watson and Sarah Vance. The state attorney trying to prosecute me and put me in prison, this little fat lesbian with no hair. And uh, I go up and we pick the jury. We start picking the jury in the morning. Bring my criminal attorney. My wife's there trying to prosecute the father of her children and have me put in prison for a minimum of two years. Yeah, folks. All over 100 grand or 80 grand of a mobile home. That's how sick this is. She ruined her children and my life after 10 years of marriage because she couldn't stop lying, cheating, and stealing. And she wanted money. She got Americanized. Gold digging Americanized is what I call it. So, anyways, we pick the jury. We get the jury. I guess there's seven people on the jury or whatever. And I think there was one black female, African American, in the jury and the rest were dudes. I don't know why. Maybe somebody in the comments can explain that. From what I call, recall. And... We go through the whole process. They put her on the stand. The state attorney has her go up there, crocodile tears. She's an actress. Fake crying the whole nine yards, making all these lies up about me. But here's what's interesting. When they arrested me, she says I slapped her in the face in front of, uh, I believe it was... I believe it was one child she had said on the police reports. Don't quote me on it. You guys can go look it all up. I'm going to make it all public anyway. See, there's three officer statements, body camera footage, everything else, where she said that I slapped her. She says she tried to commit suicide. She took all those pills. She tried to kill herself uh, in front of at least one child, right? When she went to get the injunction, restraining order and removal of children which was instructed and drummed up by all these corrupt women that you're paying with your tax dollars and DCF and help now and the IFP attorneys and all this shit. Uh, she wrote in her sworn affidavit under penalty of perjury that I punched her closed fist in the eye. And I think she said the back of the head. I don't remember. Or I think maybe she said that in front of the jury. At some point she said that. <clears throat> and that I did it in front of all three children wrote my daughter my son and my stepdaughter right in the injunction paperwork and in that paper it says under penalty of perjury you sign this document that you not only wrote this but that you read and understand it this is your statement punishable by a felony if you're lying and it has a little box under it i believe that somebody helped you put their information and we already knew this we already knew she lied so that was part of the evidence we we're going to throw out her in front of the jury so while she's up on the stand she has a whole different story because now I have the children at the jury trial ready to testify that it was, in fact, her that used to hit me. And I've only restrained her. I'm twice her size. If I would have hit her, she would be in the ER. She'd be in intensive care. Okay? I did not hit this woman. 
I'm six foot, 220 pounds. She's 100 pounds wet, okay? And, and that was another thing you could clearly see. You could, the officers even knew it was a joke. So did Judge Magical, by the way. But they always side on the side of caution during injunction hearings. So by the way, back to the injunction hearing, I forgot about that. I ended up going to the injunction hearing before the criminal trial and Magical was on the fence what to do about it. But I didn't want my, my lawyer in that case and my lawyer in the criminal case didn't want me to testify because anything you say in that case can be used against you in the other case. It's better you don't testify. But they wanted to get a free deposition out of her and use against her what she said in that hearing in front of the jury, which they did, which was all lies and they proved it. Um, so the judge sided on the side of caution and put a two-year injunction in place. Um, but, and he gave me back visitation rights every other weekend of the children till we could get to the divorce hearing for the motion to show cause. In the motion to show cause hearing, so let me back up. Um, I don't believe, yeah, we had not been through the criminal trial. Get off the criminal trial for a minute in front of the jury. They hadn't been through the criminal trial yet. And um, we ended up getting in front of Judge Magical for the t emergency, for the emergency motion for temporary uh, custody of the children that he denied that is now a motion to show cause why we, he shouldn't throw us in jail. In that hearing, I brought, as soon as I ha saw the allegations, I went and took a 10 panel drug test. I brought the model release, the federal documents, the 2257s, the stories. You know, I, I, I left my wife for nine days in Orlando when my father was dying of COVID in Miami with the children, all the money, all the credit cards. Every, she had everything. You know, if, if, if it was even remotely true, anything she was saying, I sex trafficked her and forced her and coerced her. This is what her lawyers filed in a motion. And, and I was beating her. You know, it, it, it was all debunkable, easy. It was clear what they were doing. We get to the hearing. Judge Magigal apologizes and says, you know, I should have. He sees my drug test. He sees everything. And he says, you know, I should have known better. And to trust DCF, I find DCF to be a widely uncredible and unorganized organization. The judge, Diego Magigal III, says this in the courtroom. Me and my lawyer looked at each other. We're dumbfounded. We were talking about it for a while after the court hearing outside. Like, I can't believe he said that. Because this is how corrupt our system is, folks. And I had a lawyer at the time. You know, if, if I didn't have the lawyer, I would have probably said a lot of other things that, that I couldn't say with the lawyer. But anyway, so what ends up happening? Um, he gives us, he undenies the motion and sets it to hearing. We end up three different times going for that hearing and these corrupt IFP attorneys, including Beta Colazzo, which works for, uh, I think it's FloridaLegal.org. Yeah, I think it's Florida Legal, um, which is a separate, you know, organization. I need to talk about that too. So that organization, I ended up obtaining the document uh, to get their assistance for low-income people or domestic violence victims and stuff like that. It's a separate organization from Help Now and their lawyers um, to get their assistance. You need to either be a United States citizen or you need to have a valid passport, valid green card and be able to prove you're legal in the country. She forged the document saying that she was a U.S. citizen and or had the documents, which she don't. Um, and that's why they're representing her to this day. Um, and they know it. And I've told them that and they're assisting her with committing fraud. Um, so anyways, back to what happened. So she's got the purple haired lawyer, Beto Colazzo. She's got the. Two lesbians, uh, Jennifer Watson and Sarah Vance from Help Now organizations, from two different law firms and organizations, all funded by your tax money in the state, in the government. And we get into, uh, they come and they tell the judge, oh, well, she needs time to get another lawyer and this and that, da, 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 and they keep continuing out. We got three continuances. In the motion, they had said, if I get guilty, and, and that's why they kept pushing it out, it was a game. They said that there was some Florida statute that if I got a guilty, it would be grounds for me to only get supervised visitation for like two hours on the weekends with my children. And that's what they were hoping was going to happen. So that's why they kept continuing out the uh, emergency motion for temporary custody during the child, uh, during the proceedings of the divorce, in the divorce case, because they don't have the guilty verdict. They can't use that against me. So they kept pushing it out as a stupid little game, corruption. So I go in front of the jury. All these, these three lawyers are there again. Now the state attorney, this little 
potbelly pig over there, lesbian with no hair, and um, man hater, compulsive lying feminist. All of them are compulsive lying feminists, every single one of them. She lied so many times in her opening statement and her closing statement to the jury, it wasn't even funny. I mean, blatant lies. Even at the closing statement, I remember, and I'll go back, I'll, I'll rewind in a minute, but I want to say about that. In her closing statement, she even blatantly said that I admitted to something during the trial that was, the jury looked at each other like, no, he didn't. I mean, this is what, they lie so much that they don't even realize the level of, like, duh, we were all sitting right here. We know he didn't say that. That's how, that's how they, stupid these women are and how much they lie. So what ends up happening is we go through the jury. They put her on the stand. Crocodile tears. She testifies. Lie, 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 lie for Buddha, lie for Buddha, lie for Buddha, lie for Buddha, Buddha, lie, Buddha, lie. That's what she does. And the jury just saw right through it. My lawyer ripped her apart. Even got her admitting to committing perjury because in the injunction case, and she knew my daughter was there to testify that she was lying, where she said I hit her in front of the two younger children and my stepdaughter. Now she's in front of the jury. When he's asking her about it, he goes, no, 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 I didn't write that. I only wrote the top part. I didn't write that. No, no, I didn't know that was there. Oh, so which part of the document did you write? Oh, no, my neighbor wrote it. But it says right here under penalty of perjury. She ends up lying so much to try to cover her lies, she admits to committing perjury to even get the injunction. She, she says the neighbor wrote it and that she didn't know what she was signing and she didn't understand it. That was the only defense she had to cover her other lies. So they impeach her as a witness. She looks like a total idiot, which she is. And uh, after she, they impeach her as a witness, they put my daughter... Well, they, uh, I, I don't remember if I came up first or second. I believe... No, I came up second or third. I came up second or third. I don't remember. No, I was the third one, I think. I think it was my daughter that came up next. And my daughter told the truth. It was actually her beating the shit out of her. She was physically abusing my daughter for years. Um, she used to throw knives and throw plates, smash plates on the floor and throw knives. And uh, she almost, literally almost cut my two-year-old daughter's head off one day when she smashed the plate on the floor in the kitchen. I think she testified about that. I know I did. Um, the woman is a psychopath. To be frank, she's like most women you when you tell them they're wrong. They can't admit they're wrong. They throw their panties in a bunch and throw a fit like a four-year-old very common with women but you can't say that or you call the sexist and a womanizer but it's true that was my wife anytime you told her wrong or she didn't get her way or she she had egg on her face throw a fit just like judge holly dernthal is doing right now i'll get to that violating all my rights and civil rights and constitutional rights we're almost there we'll get there soon so what ends up happening is um uh, and th that's another reason why these women hate me and are trying to bury me because I speak the truth and they don't like it. They run block, hide, ban block, suspend, shadow ban you when you tell the truth. That's what they do. Silence the truth. They hate it. So anyway, and I keep proving it in court. Jury comes out. My lawyer had told me, do not call your wife a prostitute and attack her in front of the jury. It's going to look bad. It's going to look re revengeful. It's, you know, you're going to lose the case if you do that. I'm sorry. I'm 43 years old. I do what I feel in my heart. Okay, there were several things he told me not to do and not to say in front of the jury. I did it anyway. I brought my heart and I brought the truth in front of that jury. And the jury saw it. So my lawyer looks at me at the end of it. So that was another thing. After I testified uh, all the truth, you know, about her, this is all a scam for the house and the custody. And, you know, I, I told everything. I had also spewed the beans about how she was a prostitute from Thailand and he was pissed and we were arguing at the lawyer table afterwards and he goes I'm gonna punch you in the face if you don't shut the f up you know but we're friends but he was being serious but you know he was really pissed off at me because he he wins he's a top trial lawyer and he wins and wins and wins and he thought I lost him the case he said dude you're effed not only are you gonna get a guilty you're going to end up going to prison for a while and they're going to sentence you right now instead of uh, later. And he's, he's freaking me out. I'm like, why? We all told the truth. What's going on? <clears throat> Jury goes back, 
10 minutes, not even 10 minutes later, they deliberate unanimously, not guilty on all counts, everything dropped and dismissed. I said, see, Michael, you got to have faith in God and you got to tell the truth. That's what I did. The jury saw it. They believed me. And that's what I did. I'm a Christian, by the way. And I believe everything happens. And I believe all this shit has happened to get the da my daughter out of the abuse that is my wife that I didn't even know she was being abused. But now my two younger children are being abused by her. I'm going to get to that story now. So what ends up happening is after this, you know, all these Looney Tune, Looney Bird, feminist Kool-Aid in the hair, lesbian man haters are against me. They're through the roof. Now, a month into my arrest, I call her my guardian angel. I met the love of my life from the Philippines, Catholic Christian, um, not Buddhist Thai, not from Thailand. Uh, she was single and she never had kids. And she came into my life and was helping me support the three children in the two months that I had them the last month. Because I was like a month into this. I had met her. Sorry, I'm jumping around, but I forgot to tell you that. I'll come back. And um, she fell in love with the kids and she wanted to help me. I was a single father. I ended up buying an RV, was living in an RV, pulling it behind my truck, taking care of a three and four year old and an 11 year old. It was a nightmare for two months and a month into it. She came into my life, and I believe she was a blessing sent from God. I believe she's a guardian angel. And she's been with me more than a year now, and we have a three-month-old boy together. I'll get into that. Beautiful boy. I have four kids now. So uh, all these feminists are through the roof. They want to kill all of us. You should see the looks they give my fiancé in the courtroom every time I bring her in. And she was pregnant during a lot of this. They fill DCF reports with libel, slander, and lies, okay? My fiance is going to sue them. It's all coming. It's all coming, folks. We get a copy of the DCF records, and I'm still getting copies of more of the libel and slander. They continue to follow to this day. They say I'm sex trafficking her and holding her hostage and all kinds of stuff. And the filing a false report to DCF is a felony, by the way. And I know the people that are mostly doing it are the injunction for protection lawyers. I just filed, if you go in the Osceola County court records, you'll find it. I just filed personal civil lawsuits for libel, slander, collusion, uh, and my divorce cases and all the other stuff that these two lawyers have done. I just filed personal lawsuits against Jennifer Jane Watson and Sarah Vance. I also filed a personal lawsuit against my wife for false arrest, false imprisonment, libel, and slander. And I also filed a lawsuit, this is just about a week ago, two weeks ago. I also filed a lawsuit on behalf of my daughter for her abusing my daughter. I'm against the whole corrupt machine. <coughs> and I'm one guy doing it pro se as my own lawyer. All the, I, I don't have a lawyer in any of these cases. I did, I've learned to, to use, uh, I've learned to be a lawyer and that's what I'm doing. Well, not, I don't know the laws like they do. I have to look stuff up, but I'm getting railroaded. So well, here's what happens. Judge Madrigal gets to the custody hearing. I still had a lawyer at the time. And uh, he says, we don't get the, it was like a three o'clock hearing and the courthouse closes at five. I ran too late. Um, we're winning the hearing. We won the not guilty. She had me falsely arrested, falsely imprisoned. She committed perjury to ha make him sign that injunction paperwork. He's got egg on his face. He's pissed off. We're winning this hearing. But my lawyer didn't even get a chance to question my wife and have her testify because it ran too late and I knew the judge was sitting on 50% and he was he's like I can either give you 50 50 custody now or we can schedule this out they could continue it might be three or six months again before you get more than every other weekend visitation with your kids or I can go ahead and give you 50 50 custody now now the other thing that had happened was my wife the irresponsible druggy prostitute that, it, that I'm, that, that is not, that is free reign to do whatever she wants now with a crackhead across the street and whoever else she meets on the internet. I was sitting there documenting on social media everything she was doing, including twerking in thongs on TikTok and booty shorts and got five guys on a live stream while they're tipping her tokens, um, while the kids are in the house, all kinds of stuff. Um, 
trafficking drugs with a neighbor to Illinois. Um, matter of fact, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> but I turned the kids over to DCF. Wait till you hear this. This is another crime they committed. Sorry to jump around and back up. There's a lot to this story that I'm forgetting and leaving out. So when I gave the kids to DCF in the Tico order where they committed perjury. And I knew it from her social media accounts too. She wasn't in the country. She was in Illinois. She was doing one of her prostitution clients out in Illinois. And she was also trafficking drugs with the neighbors. They rent, they rent vehicles in the airport over there and they traffic drugs back and forth from Illinois. And they were, she was with Michelle and Tony across the street, the drug traffickers trafficking drugs and prostituting herself out in Illinois. And I knew it. And I told DCF that. So Kendra Jenkins tells me, listen, we need you to sign uh, this permission thing saying that we can temp take temporary custody of your kids overnight. If not, we have to go back to the dependency court judge, open a dependency case, put your children in foster care, and neither your wife or you will see your kids for up to a year. And they're talking only about the two younger children because they had already given me my daughter back. And I'm going to show it all to you guys because it's I documented it purposely all on text message to their cell phones and I have it all. You're going to see all of what I'm saying is true. So they tell me, unless you sign this paper, we got to do this. And I said, you know what? My kids are safer that we they don't see me. or And this is hard to do, but it was true. I said, it's better my kids don't see me or her for a year than my kids being with her. They're in a safer environment. And I don't believe in foster care. I don't believe that's a safe environment, but it'd be safer than with their mother. That's how bad this woman is. I can't believe you're saying that. You don't know what you're saying. I said, yes, I do. I was married to a woman for 10 years. She's a totally responsible wreck. She's an idiot. So I instructed them, uh, uh, her, I believe Giselle and somebody else. I have all the text messages. And I have them all documented outside the phone. And don't worry, they're on USB sticks everywhere. So when they, they try to throw me in jail and silence me, other people have them too. I document all on text messages and I instructed them you are to put my children in a dependency case in foster care. You are not allowed to keep my children overnight in a temporary custody situation. I will not sign that paper. What do you think happened? They broke the law. They kept the kids in a temporary situation without my authority with a mother not in the state. And when she came back the next day, they gave her the kids. And I've seen it somewhere. I think it was in one of the DCF reports. They lied and said she was in Mississippi and that she came in that night. That's not true. She was in Illinois and she couldn't be there till the next day. They changed the time frame is what they did. They're a bunch of compulsive liars. So anyways, <clears throat> fast forward. Where were we at? After the criminal trial, we get to the uh, back to the emergency custody hearing. Uh, he's sitting on 50, 50, but I had already proved we actually played a video in the courtroom of my wife jumping off the bed and shaking her butt out of her shorts and half booty shorts for tips and tokens on TikTok on a live stream with five guys with one guy with his finger up his nose to hear that they all look like they had a mental illness. And the judge literally said, Diego magic, all this heard literally was so disgusted by the video and he played it on the projector on the wall in the courtroom and i said this is what she's doing around the children your honor and this is the people she's bringing into my house and she's banging these people on my furniture in my bed in my house in front of the children i want my house back i want her out i want her away from the kids you know i want full custody i want my house back i want my life back i want her out of here send her back to thailand he was so disgusted by it he literally said I believe that every single one of the people in that video, and he was talking about my wife too, have some sort of mental illness. That's what he said. Then he said, unfortunately, the hearing has run out. I can reschedule this to continue another day. Give your lawyer an opportunity to question your wife and she could testify, or I could just set it 50-50 but I'll make a set of orders and prevent this from going on. He was talking about the video. And there were several other complaints I had. These guys coming into my house saying, daddy beat up mommy, daddy no good, including her current new boyfriend that she has now. I'll get into that. And all kinds of other stuff, right? Um, she was leaving the kids in the crack house with Michelle across the street. So the judge makes a set of orders, 50-50 custody. Nobody is allowed to babysit the children. But me, her, or the daycare, 
she put, it wasn't her, it was a corrupt mafia woman organization of feminists put the children in Trinity Daycare School and Church. It's on 192 in Kissimmee. Stay away from that place, folks. I'm going to explain why. I didn't know at the time, it's an arm of help now. It's a corrupt arm of help now. Your tax money's paying for it. I'll get into that a little later. So he says, only, so that was the other thing. I asked, she denied leaving the kids with it. I said, where are the kids right now? She goes, oh, one of the daycare teachers um, is coming to the house and babysitting the kids. She said that one of the teachers was at the mobile home, at our house, taking care of the kids when I brought up the question, where are the kids right now? Because I knew the kids were with somebody they shouldn't have been. She lied, she committed perjury and said that they were with the daycare teacher at the house. So in the order, he says, nobody's allowed to babysit these kids, but me, her, or the daycare teacher. Okay? The daycare teacher was only put in there because she committed perjury and lied. Because I went and found out from the school afterwards there was nobody at the house. It was actually one of her um, adult movie fan prostitution client boyfriends she was dating. Amongst many others she was dating at the same time that was at the house taking care of my three-year-old daughter. This pervert off the internet. And my four-year-old son. And the kids told me. And the school confirmed they've never been to her house. They don't do that type of thing. So he puts in the order that. Nobody can have the kids but the daycare teacher, me or her. He also puts in the order that neither party can produce any adult material during their time sharing with the children. Includes her turking in booty shorts on TikTok. He puts in there that they're to continue going to this uh, daycare. At the time, they were not old enough to go to school. They, they continue to go to this d daycare. And that it's one week to me, one week to her. I have to take the children there on her weeks. Uh, my week, she takes the children there on her weeks. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, we walk out of court. We start to do that. The first day of school. The first day of school. It's, uh, sorry, daycare. That I was, it was my week to take them. Because they weren't old enough to be in school. And he, nowhere it talks about school in the court order. It says daycare. They start firing cannons at me and my fiance. They say the first day of daycare that we were supposed to take them that there was no lunch in their bag and that they didn't have breakfast and they were starving we had taken them to mcdonald's right next door to have breakfast on our way there she had packed them full lunches fruits chips sandwiches the works in both of their bags with their uniforms and their you know cute little book bags and their lunch boxes and everything and it, the court had ordered that we talk on talking parents so they can monitor everything. So this is going on documented on monitoring on talking parents. I called the school up. She, she sent it to me to document it on the court on talking parents. She said, what are you talking about? Oh, the school just called me and told me that. So I called the school. They said, they claimed they never told her that. It was all a game. I'm scratching my head going, what's going on here, you know? And it continued. Cockroach in a water bottle. And my daughter's water bottle. It was a brand new water bottle we bought from Dollar Store. My fiance cleaned it out and filled it up that morning. There's no possible way there was any cockroach in that water bottle. It's just all kinds of accusations start flying out of the school. And what was weird about it is every time the, there was abuse going on with the kids and I was bringing it to their attention from the mother's side is when they fired cannons at me and made the allegations. So I got tired of it. So I went to the pastor one day with my fiance and uh, we had a closed door meeting with him, spilling the beans to him and says, look, you got Angelina Gomez, the principal, uh, Susie, one of the teachers, Jessica, another one of the teachers and somebody else and, and somebody else and somebody else. You had all these women to add to the mafia woman organization of feminist man haters that she already has on her side in the court, DCF, uh, help now and all the other shit to go on now at the school. So it was becoming clear what was going on. So I think, I think I'd already figured this out. At some point I figured this out. That also, the, the tuition to go to that place was like $2,000 a month. $1,000 per kid a month. Don't think ridiculous. Don't quote me on it. I think it was like two grand a month. Through this government grant, through Help Now, Domestic Violence Victim, that this daycare church school is profiting the kids. So when we talked to the pastor, he's a male. There was two male pastors. I tried to talk to the other one. They blocked me. 
I tell him what's going on. I says, look, I know you're in a bad position to go against all these females, but this is what's going on. He also tells me that 90% of the kids in that school, church, daycare, that goes all the way to high school, are domestic violence victim kids. And they work tightly with, I, I found out later, they work tightly with Help Now, Jennifer Watson, Sarah Vance, the IFP attorneys, Betta Colazzo, Florida Legal, they're all in bed together. It's all a corrupt machine. They're all washing each other's you know what. I was like, what? Now it makes sense. So that same day, it was a coincidence, we walk out of the office with the, with the pastor after a, a closed door meeting with him. And that was the other thing. The judge had made an order that we weren't to talk bad about each other in front of the children. That was one of the cannons that they kept firing at me through my wife, through the talking parents, saying I was going into the school talking bad about the children in front of the children, which was a lie. I've only talked to them behind closed doors or when the children weren't there. And I've always been very friendly, very polite. And so anyways, we get out of the meeting and the principal, Angelina Gomez, my son's teacher, Miss Susie, brings the kids out. Well, the principal is standing by the front desk in the welcome center. And from what I believe, don't quote me on all this, it's, it's a little gray, it's been a while. Susie brings the kids over. And uh, she says, uh, I see my son and he's got a big, deep gash and a scab on his lip. Hey, buddy, where'd you get that? What's going on? Oh, at Michelle's house. Or he says, I, I fell or something, or at Michelle's house. One of the two. He says it's at Michelle's house that he fell on the screen porch with his sister in the house and that uh, I, I said, well, was mom there? No, no, mom wasn't there. We were there alone. Who was there? Tony. Is Tony smoking that stinky marijuana stuff? Because my see, my kids know the difference between the smell of cigarettes and marijuana. <laughs> Excuse me. I sneeze. Because when we moved into that house, you could smell it coming out of the crackhead screen porch all the time. And I taught my kids and I says, you smell that. That's marijuana. That's a drug that's bad. You ever smell that? You get away from it. So they know what it smells like. They know what marijuana is, even at their age. And he was four at the time. <laughs> so he says, yeah, yeah, Tony was smoking that stinky marijuana stuff in front of me. So my wife was violating the court order, leaving the kids in the crack house with the crackheads. He got seriously injured has a big, deep gash with a scab on his lip, and they're smoking drugs around him. And now, Miss Susie, the teacher, the principal, and the pastor are a witness to what he just said. And I turn around, I says, you realize you're all getting subpoenaed, right? That's when the war started. They weren't going to allow that to happen. They weren't going to let their $2,000 a month go away. They don't care that the child's being abused, even though they're a Christian church, my ass. Ain't no freaking Christians. Um, so, I don't know. Some other stuff happened. I can't even remember. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I asked to have a, a closed door meeting with the principal and the teachers. They said that they, they were going to do that. Next thing you know, they fire off a letter to me saying I was harassing and stalking uh, teachers and, and, and parents and being disruptive in the welcome center and that I was aggressive and hostile. And, you know, I, I was talking like this, very polite, very, very, you know, like, it's a school, church. it's a church, you know? I've never been aggressive in there, never been aggressive to any of them. It's all bullshit. So they send me this threatening letter, accusing me of all this crazy stuff with libel and slander of things I didn't do. And then they say, well, you're no longer allowed in the welcome center. You're gonna to have to do your drop-offs and pickups outside the welcome center. Let me pause this for a second. By the way, I quit smoking, uh, and now I'm smoking again because of all this stuff. So anyways, we're talking about the welcome center. So they sent me this letter saying that I have to do my drop-offs and pickups outside the welcome center, and that I'm banned from the building. And they're using this as a tool and a tactic, like threatening to show the court this and have them testify against me. And what's funny is they did this the day after I filed an emergency motion in the court to remove all contact with the mother and sent it to the principal and the teachers, telling them that I was going to subpoena them and whatnot. This was like their little tactic, like, keep pushing and we're going to stand up against your wife, uh, for your wife against you. 
So I fire an email back at Angelina Gomez and the school. I never refused to do what they were saying. I never disagreed with it because that would be a violation of the court's order, right? I simply, no, they because they had said in there, contact your lawyer if you have any questions, but I had already fired my lawyer. So I emailed back, I still have the email, something along the lines of, I don't need to email any lawyer. I'm pro se, I'm my own lawyer. And on top of that, I'm in WordPad in my other window right now, typing up a personal civil lawsuit against you, Angelina Gomez. Have a nice day. Then all of a sudden, I get an email back saying, the children are permanently enroll disenrolled from the school because of my threats and violence and all this crazy stuff. And all of a sudden, the lawyers file motions in the court for all, all the teachers and the principal to come testify against me that are going to come tell all these lies. Yeah, people of a church, you believe this? <laughs> Corrupt people of a church making $2,000 a month off my kid that is an arm of kids that is a corrupt arma help now organization and these laurel lawyers and the rest of them but remember there is one thing to be said what are they getting in their ear oh this guy's a woman beating sex trafficker yeah 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 they're believing this garbage right i could see it already so sorry i have a congestion because i have a little bit of a cold right now that and i haven't slept for the last two nights much i've been crying most of the time because of what just happened which i'm going to get to very soon here um, so they put, uh, they, they transferred Diego Magical the third off my case, right? They put judge Michael Snorri was appointed in 1980 floor by the Florida bar. He's an old white guy. I go sit in his courtroom as the audience and feel the judge out. I'm learning to be a lawyer doing my own case. You know, I said it would be a good idea if I go down to the court see take some notes in the courtroom get some pointers and learn some stuff and see what this guy's about no no, no i'm sorry back up i didn't get snore forgot about christy collins <laughs> wait till you hear this so they transferred diego magical off the case they put an african-american female judge named christy c collins on my case She's a Democrat, far leftist, feminist man hater that uh, was uh, worked in, as she told me in the courtroom, she worked in domestic violence and with, with women's rights advocacy and all this stuff for her whole career as a lawyer before she became a judge. Here we go. Now, remember, all my pro se motions at this point, don't, you can see a lawyer didn't write them. Man hating feminist African American this, African American man hating feminist this. I put it right in the motion. I'm telling the truth. So help me God. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. So now I got a black female judge that hates men already reading all this crap. I knew I, I, knew I was done for. <clears throat> I get into the courtroom and I had 11 motions, including motions for child testimony, uh, child hearsay, allowed of child testimony of third party witnesses that have uncovered abuse and neglect because child hearsay is not allowed hearsay is not allowed but if you if, if a witness has heard a child disclose something that's abuse or neglect uh, you can file a motion and allow them to testify in the court to what they've heard the child say i had uh, at the time three counselor reports now i have four from the counselor that was counseling all three children for about a year I think almost a year at that point, I had several witnesses, all kinds of stuff. I was going to win that hearing. If I had magic all, I win. If I had any fair, let me rephrase that. If I had any fair judge, I would win. I walk into the courtroom. She makes a spectacle of me. Ha, 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 motion denied. Ha, 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 motion denied. Gives me a powwow and a spanking, a verbal beating in the courtroom. Verbal spanking, verbal beating, whatever you want to call it. Clowns me in the courtroom, makes a fool of me. But remember, Jennifer Watson and Sarah Vance over there. And Purple Hair. I, I think Purple Hair was there too. Forget who all was there. They all are in front of this judge every day. They know her. They probably are personal friends with her. They probably go to lunch with her. They probably were lawyers together fighting against each other and with each other before she became a judge. 
It's a big corrupt ball of wax, these women. So they're making fun of me in the courtroom, all motion deny, motion deny. So I, uh, the Sixth Amendment, and there's another couple amendments, protect us to the right, to a fair judge, a fair trial, a fair hearing, and all this, non-biased judge, non-biased jury, yada, yada, yada. I knew this. So I immediately filed JQC complaints to the Judicial Committee. One of my lawyer friends, a couple of my lawyer friends helped me with, you know, gave me the idea to do this stuff. I filed JQC complaints with the Judicial Committee. She had violated, the judges have a, a standard set of ethics and rules they have to abide by. They're called the Florida Canons. And she had violated a bunch of the Florida Canons. I de documented, detail it all, file a complaint with the JQC. The Judicial Committee in Washington, D.C. that you file complaints to judges about. And then I attach it in a motion to recuse. By doing that and showing it to her in the attachment, see Exhibit A, now that she's read that, that you can prove bias. Now she's absolutely biased because I'm making a complaint against her and she's reading it. She has to step down, right? Generally, yes. Unless she's a stubborn woman that can't admit she's wrong and wants to break the law. I had filed it as an emergency. She denies the motion because my children were in danger in a crack house and all the rest of it. My son was seriously injured. Um, by the way, he lost his two bottom teeth. Um, he still has a scar on his lip to this day. And uh, I filed it as an emergency and said, because, my, because of what you've done, my children are in grave danger around the mother still. I consider this an emergency. She denied it as an emergency and told me to file it as a non-emergency. So I refiled it as a non-emergency. So she already knew that she was going to grant it as a non-emergency. She knew she was biased. She accepted that because she ended up accepting the motion and stepping down. But she took it a step further, which I filed a second JQC complaint about. Because there's something in the law that says if a judge knows they're biased, they're not allowed to make decisions in the case, sign any orders, or do anything. So the next day I had filed it, she sets an order. So when they order stuff in the courtroom, it's not officially ordered. It usually takes a couple days, even a week or two, for them to actually draw up the orders and get them to the judge and have them sign them. A lot of times the lawyers will, will do it, drop the orders, and the judge just signs it from what, what they agreed upon in the court. She hadn't signed any orders. Even though she said motion denied, motion denied, motion denied, they weren't officially denied until she signs that paper. So what she did was, as a stab in the back of the way out the door, she broke the law and set an order denying my 11 motions on her way out the door. Then the next day, she accepts my motion granted on my recusal and she recuses herself. So she makes a mess. So then that's when they put Judge Michael Snore appointed in 1984. I already told you a story. I got confused. They put him on the case and I start filing stuff in front of him. And in the beginning, um, I had an issue with his judge's assistant that was a female because remember, these judges' assistants are all females, and they work with the lawyers, particularly Jennifer Jane Watson and Sarah Vance, every day. They call each other on the phone, which is ex parte. Can be considered ex parte. So ex parte is illegal. I think it's a criminal offense, actually. In the law, it states, I cannot talk and communicate with the judge without the other party present. That's called ex parte. So when I email the judge's assistant for any judge, I have to CC and attach and send the email also to the other lawyers or the other party. They have to do the same. Judges' assistants have their phone numbers listed. They'll accept phone calls. They'll do some stuff, but they're not supposed to, like, run to the judge when you call them without the other side involved, which is what they do and what goes on. And I had a feeling that was something going on. I filed a motion about it. Judge Schnorr actually got mad at me, so don't accuse me in, in his response. Don't accuse my J.A. of that. From there forward, everything was fine. She was really nice. Everything worked out good. We were filing motions for like six months, I think. Back and forth, back and forth. The war happens in court. And I noticed that this judge was on my side. He was granting a lot of my motions and granting he hearings. And he was denying a lot of their motions. He knew what was up. But I was, now I'm really telling the truth. An old white guy from, been a lawyer since 1984. He knows what's up telling him the truth so help me god and using the language you know compulsive lying female feminist this that the other kool-aid in the hair the whole nine yards i think he was disgusted by it 
but he has to work with all these women every day. He's not going to go against all these women that he works with and lose his job. So what ends up happening is all three lawyers, Jennifer Jane Watson, Sarah Vance, and the purple hair, Betta Colazzo, sign motions to withdraw and they jump off the case. Yeah. They get off the case and they put this other lawyer on named Emily Calvin. It's a transsexual lawyer with rainbow hair down to her hips. She's married to a woman with a beard that looks like a guy that she calls her husband. I'm not going to go into too many details because social media will ban me for even talking about this. But to say the very least, I file a 60 page complaint and a motion to withdraw her lawyer because she has a personal conflict of interest to bury me and all the stuff that was going on. I called the Gainesville police on them because apparently the wife with a beard works at a pre-K school in Gainesville and had tweeted on Twitter that it had, on a hot day it had exposed itself in front of its school kids. And I guess it has really small breasts. And it said, all my students at the school asked me why I had boobies. It tweeted this and I screenshot it all. I, I, I put it all over court records. Yeah. And it, it said, I think it's time to look into top surgery again. Then I found a GoFundMe account for top surgery with, I think it was 101 donations, 9,000 some dollars, almost $10,000 in donations, top surgery fund on GoFundMe. And I was thinking this thing was a transsexual man trying to get boobs. I couldn't figure it out. And then I figured it out. No, it's actually a woman trying to chop off the little breasts it had that she keeps calling her husband. That's actually a woman with a beard that looks like a man. There was also tweets in there about them doing drugs together. There was a video of Emily Calvin twerking in lulls. I'm not joking. I took screenshots of it, put it in the court records in a motion. Um, these are the Looney Tunes that you're paying with your tax dollars to bury me and my children and fight me in court for a fake domestic violence victim, folks. So the war ensues. Then I'll, and so here's the other thing. We're ordered to talk on talking parents, but I know damn well it's not my wife talking on talking parents. She can't read and write English that well. And the words that are coming in through talking parents were words that I didn't even know that only a lawyer with a law degree would know. It's not my wife typing on there. It was the lawyers. And when Emily, when the purple haired lawyer signed off the case and Emily Calvin signed on the case, the language changed and it became more aggressive and more angry, especially when I started filing this stuff. And I knew it was Emily Calvin. So then all of a sudden I get a talking parents message. We're in an argument back and forth. And she says, Oh, yeah, and I'm documenting that our son is over-sexualized, and he's, uh, I think she only said he's over-sexualized. Don't quote me on this. I don't remember exactly how it went down on Talking Parents, but I think the first message was something like that. And then uh, I pushed her and says, well, you got to tell me what you're talking about. What are you talking about? We're both parents. We need to deal with this, you know? So then they said he was taking his penis out, dry humping the furniture in front of people. I said, well, and I had the kids that week. I said, well, if that's true, why didn't you take him to a psychologist, psychiatrist or something? You know, why haven't you documented this? Oh, I am documented. So I did what any responsible father would do. The very next morning, I think it was on a Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday. I think it was a Wednesday. <clears throat> yeah, I believe it was Wednesday. I took the child down to the child counselor's office. And when I took the child down to the child counselor's office, I had my fiance there with a newborn baby two child counselors and I took a video and we start questioning him about this he gets all defensive he's weeping I said it's okay buddy it's okay you'll see on the social media accounts the videos for those of you that haven't seen it, it's there and he turns around and he says I asked why he's doing this where do you get this from he says it's mommy you know mommy does this I said what's mommy doing you know I'm, I'm thinking that she's banging her boyfriend's in front of him or what she's doing. He says that she's making naked TikTok video with zero clothes on, twerking, making videos with absolutely no clothes. So now the thongs and the booty shorts have went to no clothes at all. So obviously it's not for TikTok. She's doing it for something, some other adult site. So I go through the roof. I start emailing DCF. All the officers going down from Marcos Lopez, the sheriff of Osceola County, Captain Baker, this one, that one. I blow up everybody's email documenting all this stuff. Put the video on an unlisted link on YouTube and demand an investigation. 
DCF, the police, everything else. Well, it was mainly DCF. Cover it all up. Refuse to do anything. But they're all mandatory reporters. For those of you that don't know what a mandatory reporter is, they're mandated by law to report any type of allegation of abuse to do with a child. So me just telling them this, they're mandated by law to send DCF out and do an investigation. Now, I had already been asking them for over a year to do forensic interviews on the children, specifically my daughter that was being physically abused that they covered up. They refuse because they know if they put the children in that interview, what's going to happen? The mother's done. So what ends up happening, this goes from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday night, 8 p.m., I believe it was. I dropped the kids at the police station to do the exchange. I give her the kids back. I had no choice. I didn't want to give her the kids back after this is going on, but I had to or I'd be in violation of the court order. I give her the kids back. Kids are perfectly healthy, no bruises, no scratches, no nothing. Perfect. Very next morning, videos on my social media accounts, I get a, I get a phone call, DCF's at my fiance's door. Okay, I come outside, you'll see the video, I walk outside. It's Waldemar Martinez, Riviera, Riviera Martinez. It's a male, never met this guy. He asked me, I started videotaping him. He asked me to cut the camera off. He was very shy of the camera. You'll see I cut the camera and then turn it back on. What he told me when he cut the camera off, he goes, look, dude, they instructed me to come out here with the police because I told them I don't want any contact with me or the children without police there and body camera rolling. I want it on video. I want it documented because all the games they play. And his bosses had not only instructed him about that, but he also instructed him that I'll be aggressive with a video camera in his face and this and that. Let me back up for a minute. Just a couple weeks before this, they had made a false accusation, and I have the documents, I got the records, full of libel and slander and lies about me and my fiance and the children, claiming that the children had bruises and scratches and that I was holding them hostage and putting them in punishment all day and locking them in the house and all kinds of crazy shit, right? Wait till you hear this. They had called me, and we were at the Wild Florida Zoo with the children. My daughter was in school, and the two younger children were not in school, not in daycare. I was taking care of them full time. And I tell the officer, you come out here to the Wild Florida Zoo, and you bring the police and body camera. You're going to see there's no bruises and scratches. It's more bullshit. They've done this so many times. They've made so many false reports because it gives them an opportunity during the investigation to fill the reports with anonymous callers, which are the lawyers, and help now and all these corrupt women to make false accusations and fill the reports with false accusations so the judge reads it and think all these different people must be telling the truth and making phone calls and something's up. It's, it's that screwed up, believe me. Because I got all the records, I've seen them. Well, not the most recent ones, but... So anyways, fast forward back to Alder Moore Riviera Martinez now at my door. He already knew that, he already read it all. And he, he, made me cut the, he asked me to cut the camera off, I did. And he's like, look, dude, I just came from your wife's house. I seen there's no bruises and scratches on the children. And as a matter of fact, when I asked her where, why there was no bruises and scratches where they were, she said, oh, well, they're gone already. I said to her, well, you, you got the kids at 8 p.m. last night and it's like 8 in the morning. You've only had the kids for, you know, however many hours. How did it disappear that fast? He knew it was bullshit. So he goes, look, I did, and you'll see in the video, I, I turned the video back on when he starts telling me all this because I needed a document. And he says, well, I just need a statement from you and, and I'm going to go about my way. I'm like, uh, 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 not so fast. I'm calling the sheriff's office. The sheriff is going to come out here. We're going to do an investigation, buddy. And it's going to be from me to her that I've been trying to do since Wednesday. And this is Saturday. They've been covering the shit up since Saturday. Instead of doing the investigation on her and her sexual abuse, they turn around and make false accusations against me, right? Okay, so sheriffs get involved. They still don't do anything. Uh, nothing gets officially reported to Tallahassee. I'm on the phone with a black woman, Shireen Henry, the head of DCF, because the other head of DCF, Carlos Robos, is out of town. Um, this thing, it's just a big mess. So Saturday turns into Sunday night. Uh, they instruct me that they're not going to make the report, even though they're mandated by law to make the report, that I had to make the report through the portal to Tallahassee. Okay, so I says, you know what, let me go ahead and do this while I have the children, which I'm getting the children tomorrow night, Sunday night. So Sunday night, I get the kids at the police station. 
Uh, it's a long story of why. Uh, for like the last six months, I've had to take care of the children on my weeks and her weeks um, because she doesn't have a car, a driver's license, a daycare, nothing. And I've taken care of the children full time and just given her my weeks and her weeks. So, or I'm sorry, weekends, weekends. She's got my weekends and her weekends that I've been taking all weeks. So the kids are with me, living with me all the time. And my fiance and my, my daughter, that's her older sister. So, um, I get the kids at the police station Sunday night back. I make the re a long report all written up. I'm going to make it public now. Um, to DCF and the investigation is open. I had coordinated with Shine Henry. She's going to, she said she's going to send Waldemar, the same officer back out to investigate the allegations and talk to the children and interview the children about what the counselor had already uncovered on video. They send Waldemar back out with the police on body cameras. And he says he's only there to investigate the time he, which was months ago, the time he got injured in the crack house. They're not going to investigate any of the other many allegations of smoking the drugs in front of the children, the, the twerking naked, all the stuff. They covered it all up. I called Sharon Henry. She blames it on Tallahassee. said, well, she can only investigate what Tallahassee sent down to investigate. But Tallahassee had all the allegations because I typed them out and put it through the portal on their website. And I sent it in emails to everybody. I have documents of all of what my allegations were and I have videos of what I've uncovered. They refuse to investigate it. So she goes, you know what? This is, this is now Monday morning. She says, go back into the portal tonight and make a new investigation and tell Tallahassee that they're covering this stuff up and that they need to send us back out to do a proper investigation. So I do exactly that. Tuesday morning rolls around. Expecting to have Waldemar and the police here and do a proper investigation interviews with the children. And I told him I want forensic interviews as well as police and DCF initial interviews. I want them also to have a secondary interview with a child special forensic analysis, forensic interviewers. They don't even show up. I'm calling Cheyenne Henry. She says, well, we're not going to send anybody out. That morning... My son is mentally damaged and under so much stress because of all of this. So that's the other thing I forgot to tell you. Let me back up. <clears throat> the weekend when she was at, with the mother's, at the mother's house, the reason why the mother made that false accusation on the Friday night when I gave her the kids back, kids apparently must have told her what happened and what they told the counselor and everything else. Because when I picked up my son on Sunday, and I have a video, I'm going to put it up, he tells me, that Ma, he's really scared of mommy and mommy told him that he cannot tell DCF and the police the, uh, about her twerking naked in front of the children. I guess she must have known that probably Cheyenne Henry and the lawyers and everything else that are all in bed already told her what I had been emailing him since Thursday and what I was accusing her of. So she coaches the kid and threatens him that he can't tell DCF and the police this. <coughs> My son is so terrified. He hides under the couch. I was on the phone Tuesday morning, right outside the front door with Cheyenne Henry, because I don't talk in front of the kids about this stuff, trying to get her to bring Waldemar and the police out to do the proper investigation. Second investigation, I'll submit it through the portal. She's refusing, and we can't find Junior. I start yelling for Junior. I get off the phone with her. I'm going crazy, looking for Junior in the house, in the neighborhood, can't find him. I'm like, oh shit, here we go. I end up having to call 911. I'm in tears, knock on a neighbor's doors. They get a helicopter up. They send the freaking army of police out. Think it's a child abduction. There's a lake back here. They think maybe he fell in the lake or who knows what. They're like, you know, maybe you want to check the lake. And I'm like, I'm freaking out. I want to be in tears just talking about this. Well, it turns out he was hiding under the couch because he was scared of DCF and the police and scared of mom if he told them what mom was going to beat him. So the police come out. We found him while I was still on the phone with 911. So they, they slowed down their response. They sent the helicopter back. Please come here. Child's okay. They check out the child. I was pissed. I tell the police, you know what? I've had it. Either you guys are going to get DCF here right now. Take my children into a forensic interviewer. Do a proper forensic investigation on all three children. Or I'm going to the media. 
My children are going to get their damn interview, but they're going to get it on the news. I will drive to Brevard County on the East Coast all the way to Tampa on the West Coast, and I will stop at every news team for the next week, all day, all night, with my children in the truck and ha until somebody puts them on the news. I'm done playing games with you fucks. So they get a black female African-American captain in Joni of the area, very nice lady, on the phone with me. She calls me. Calm down, sir. Calm down, sir. I'm going to help you. I'm going to do everything I can for you. Yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> I said, I'm not playing games anymore. I'm done. I'm going to the media with this shit. So, um, she says, well, just calm down. Give me a couple hours. Do me that favor. I've never dealt with your case. Give me the respect. To give me a couple hours. Give me till the end of the day, whatever she asked. I think she said a couple hours. It was like 11 in the morning, I think. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to get the head child sex crimes division police officer um, that investigates child abuse and sex crimes on your case. I'm gonna see if I can get her involved in this. Give me some time, I'll call you back. So later that afternoon, I get a phone call from Waldemar Riviera. Good news. We got a forensic interview scheduled for your son tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock or whatever. I said, yeah, but what are you guys going to investigate? At this point, on the second report, I'd already even sent them all the questions I want them to ask the children. I said, I'm not going to take my kid down. First of all, I'm not going to take one kid. I want all three, as I've told you for over a year. I want the professionals to uncover the truth of all three of these children. Okay? Um, but I, not only all three of the children, you're going to investigate and ask the proper questions. Yeah? I'm not taking him to the interview. He's like, well, let me let me make some phone calls and see what I can do. Da, da, da. I think, yeah, Minjoni ended up calling me back. Captain Minjoni, don't quote me on it if I'm not mistaken. She ended up calling me back and she says, well, give me till tonight or at the latest tomorrow morning, I'm going to have Detective Suzanne Clichette, that's her name, the child abuse lady, call you back. And I said, no, I'm not giving you till... Uh, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, the kids are having breakfast. They're getting in the truck, and we're leaving and go, heading to the media. Yeah? So, right after I hung up on the phone with her, she, I get a call, and it's Suzanne Clichette, the detective. I mean, Joni must have called her. Said, this guy's not playing games. He's going to the media. So, she tells me, listen, what is it you want? I said, I want... What I've been saying for over a year now. I want my children away from that dangerous, drug-addicted prostitute from Thailand that's abusing my children and putting them in crack houses and with their prostitution clients and everything else. I want my kids out of danger. And I want you to do a proper investigation and a forensic interview with all three children like I've been asking for for a year and do your jobs. Okay, sir. Let me make some phone calls. I'll call you back. She hangs up the phone. She calls me back. She goes, all your demands have been met. Be here at this time. And we're going to do inter forensic interviews on all three children. And if you look at the social media accounts, you'll see what she said when she came out of the interview. We sat in the truck, me and my fiance, for like five hours. They had the kids upstairs in this government building doing forensic interviews on all three children. The video's on the social media accounts. Go look at it. She comes out and she talks to me. And she tells me what she can remember... The, uh, of what went on during the um, interviews. And she does disclose that my son said that my wife was twerking naked, making a video in front of him and his sister. And I said, that's sexual abuse. She says, no, it's not. I says, I don't care what you say it is. That's sexual abuse. Def and I looked it up later. And a matter of fact, one of the deputies... That was at my fiance's house the many days they were over here. I had asked him and he said, if she is doing that, that is a crime. It's an arrestable offense and it is sexual abuse. And somewhere there's a body camera footage rolling around of an officer telling me that I'm going to get it. But besides that, if you look up on the internet, it is a definition of sexual abuse. She's arguing with me that because she's the mother, she can shower naked with the child. It's not. My argument to it is showering naked with a child and doing a simulated sexual act, dry humping, naked, twerking, which is a sexual act, 
in front of the children, I'm sorry, that's a sexual act. And making a video is filming adult content, which is the definition of the law about that too, is also a violation of the law. On top of that, they covered it up. They never investigated it. I have been reporting to the courts for over a year now, and she's even admitted to it on the Talking Parents app, which she wasn't responding that the kids had the, her phone. The kids have told me that she's seen, they've seen all the adult uh, content in her phone. And showing a child adult content, mother or not, is sexual abuse and a crime. But they wouldn't prosecute her. They're not going to arrest her. Remember, she's the, she's the domestic violence victim, and I'm the woman-beating sex trafficker. Yeah, sure. So... I file an emergency motion in the divorce case. I put the videos on YouTube on an unlisted link. I quote in text in detail what came out of the detective's mouth, Susan Cliche in the video. It's all there. You can see it. What came out of my child's mouth, all the rest of it. Put the videos up. I file an emergency motion to remove custody of my wife in front of Judge Schnorr in the divorce. Moshe granted a hearing like three days out. Whoa, I'm on a win. It's very hard to get an emergency motion, folks. So the parent has to be like chopping off the kid's arms. But because it was a 911 call, they sent up a helicopter and it was all dramatic. He granted it as an emergency a hearing. <laughs> I then tell him in all my motions following that of for child hearsay and testimony of all the subpoenas I'm going to file and what these people are going to testify to, including Jessica Scott. I explain that I'm going to put her on the stand and I'm going to rip her apart and that penalty of perjury sworn affidavit that she signed full of lies and showed to the court that this literal clown circus show with the rainbow hair and the purple hair and all the rest of them and the black little fat short lesbians and all the, all of them it looks like a circus when he walks into the courtroom I just tell it in the motion I, I said I'm going to be sitting on one side of the courtroom straight white male by myself and you're going to literally have the circus over there of all females and what I'm going to do to all the witnesses and tear them apart on the witness stand and prove that all the lies, the perjury, and all the shit all these government agencies have done to me for a year and my children. Now, remember, Jennifer Watson, Sarah Vance, and the purple haired lawyer had filed motions to withdraw. I subpoena all these people, including Jessica Scott. I haven't seen in a year. She even said to me in the hallway, why am I here? And I ripped her head off verbally, like, because you lied and committed perjury and you're affecting everything. I'm going to sue her for it. And the state and DCF. Um... And it's all in the motions. I've said it countless times. All the judges know it. Um, they've seen the drug test. They've seen the model releases. They know it's bullshit. Um, so anyways, uh, we walk into the courtroom. This is exactly what I s said it was going to be. But Sarah Vance and Jennifer Watson are sitting at the lawyer table with this rainbow-haired lawyer with rainbow hair. Literal rainbow hair down to her hip. Looks like a clown show in that courtroom. And a bunch of other females sitting behind them. <laughs> Who else was there? Uh, Suzanne Clichette, Jessica Scott. I had subpoenaed them. <clears throat> um, Waldemar Riviera I subpoenaed. By the way, I didn't have time the 10 days to serve through the sheriff. So I, I served them on email and text message and they accepted it and said it was no problem. So I'm getting ready to walk in here by myself, male on one side of the courtroom against the female feminist man-hating army over here and rip them apart in the DCF and the sheriff's office and the whole system and make a clown show the system this is a clown show he wa judge Snor walks into the courtroom sits down on the bench he looks over at the lawyer table with the rainbow hair and all these clowns on her side of the courtroom and sarah vance and jennifer watson are sitting there some more clowns and he says why are you here or something oh we're just here he goes yeah but you Y'all file motions to withdraw. You aren't part of this case, and you're here sitting at the lawyer table. And they had brought their own court reporter. I, I brought a court reporter, too. In case something goes south, I can file an appeal in su the Supreme Court. They used it as an intimidation tactic, knowing I had one anyway. They brought their own. And um, what's interesting about it, both of the court reporters were black females on my side and theirs. Uh, so there's literally, like, I can't tell you how many females, and I'm the only male in the courtroom other than the judge including the court reporters, the clerk of the courts, the judge's assistant, all the people sitting next to the judge are all females. And this has been going on since day one. This is the way the system works. People probably don't even realize it. Um, so anyways, uh, he says, well, you're not supposed to be here. And they said, oh, we're just here as friends of the court, your honor. Very, but the way she said it was very intimidating. He says, I recused myself. And he walked out. Done. 
they did it as an intimidation tactic to not let me win the case in the hearing and take my wife's custody away. And they made him recuse himself. So back up a little bit. Right before this happened, I want to say it was on, a, on the Friday. That Friday, this hearing was like on a Tuesday. or it went, and This hearing was on a Wednesday because it was around 4th of July. On, after I filed the motion, emergency motion to get this hearing in the divorce case, I ran over to the injunction office and I filed injunctions on behalf of the two children to the mother for domestic violence and sexual abuse. And in there, I also detailed that, and I put the criminal transcript from the trial, from the, you know, that my daughter testified that she was physically abusing her and beating, you know, the kids and beating me and attacking me. I have the restrainer. She was Baker active for suicide. I also mentioned there, which is true. When she's gotten so angry, she's threatened to kill, murder the kids and murder herself. And I do have a grave danger. Uh, I, I feel that children are in grave danger and I have a fear that she may do something bad to particularly my son for him telling the police this after she, and DCF after she told him not to. So I filed an injunction and a restraining order saying, look, this woman's dangerous, man. She's been Baker acting for attempted suicide. She used to beat me and the kids. You know, I'm scared she's going to follow through with her threat to murder the children and murder herself. And on top of that, you know, she's damaged, mentally damaged my kids. A helicopter had to go up, a 911 call. I put it all in the injunction. And I also detailed in there to Judge Snor, which he knew already from all the motions in the divorce. And by the way, I want you to pull the card that she pulled on me a year over a year ago. And I want full possession of the house and the family pets. And I want you to evict her out of the house. Because I haven't been to my house. I haven't seen my tens of thousands of dollars worth of tools. She sold most of my stuff off. Jet skis, trailers, all kinds of stuff. Um, I have been, I, I, she has an injunction. I can't go near the house or any of my stuff. My, but what sucks about it, my now 12-year-old daughter, all her furniture, her bedroom, her clothes, her toys, everything's still there. She hasn't seen it over a year. I detail it in there. And he grants me the motion, or the petition. Petition granted. I get full possession of the house, full possession of the family cats, Susie and Mima, tiger cats. It's all detailed in the petition. He puts a restraining order against the house to her, the children to her, and the family pets to her. Sheriff supposed to go down there, throw her out of the house, and I get back into my house I haven't seen for a year. What do you think happens? The sheriff office colludes with all of them, refuses to serve her the order. This was on a Friday. The process server calls me and says, well, I'm about to leave my shift. You're going to have to call the sheriff's office when you know she's home after six because I had put that what time she comes home. And they'll serve her. I have the videos. I'm going to put them up. They refuse to serve her. They waited until the morning, I believe it was a Wednesday, the following week, to serve her and evict her out of the house. Then they turn around and tell me, even though it's a new order, and he's ordered me the house, I can't go near the house because she still's got an injunction for me not to go to the house, so nobody can go to the house. I mean, this is dirty shit. So they say, go file a motion in that original case that she has against you and tell the judge to alter that order releasing the injunction for you not to go to the house in that order. So I do. So back to the court hearing, we get to the hearing in the divorce where he's gonna decide on all this stuff. I think it was on a Wednesday. The lawyers intimidate him and recuses himself, he walks out. It was all part of the game. Because remember, there's only three judges. And those three judges, Magical's gone, is now Christy Collins. She's already been recused, she's biased. She can't touch any of my cases. Michael Snore, they've got him to step down. There's only one left. And guess who it is? Holly and Darenthal. This is the person I am trying to get impeached off the bench right now for what she just did. Wait till you hear what she's done. <clears throat> Her JA starts openly colluding and committing ex parte with Jennifer Watson and Sarah Vance and everybody else. Seven voicemails to date in over a month, completely ignored. I'm filing motions telling the judge about it. All her judge's assistance misconduct. I immediately filed motion, emergency motions to get that emergency motion in the divorce case reset. That was over a month ago. Never got reset, got ignored. They're filing motions, this, that, the other. The original injunction hearing that was two weeks out, she pushes a week forward, only gives me a week to appear. She ignores my emergency motions to, to, uh, to get them uh, heard and get them set to hearing. She's completely against me. I start filing motions to recuse. 
Denied, denied, denied. Recuse means for her to step down for bias, unfairness. She has a relationship. The other thing I find out, she was only appointed a judge two months ago from today, but this was a month ago, a month ago at the time. I start looking in the court documents and I find out that Jennifer Watson and Sarah Vance have not only been working with her in the courthouse every day, but it seems to be that they've had a long relationship when she was an attorney before she was a judge. Probably worked together on cases and worked against each other on cases in this county. They have a personal conflict of interest, obviously. You could see it. It was clear as day. So I followed, I followed a, a JQC complaint right out the door to the Judicial Committee, another motion to recuse. I think I've had like eight motions to recuse that she's denied so far. I'm on my third JQC complaint right now that I'm typing up. And that, that one's going to go public. Everything's going public. I warned her. I, I warned her. I warned the whole system. Keep pushing me. I'm going to the media. I'm going public. Now that's why I'm making this video. It's all going public. Every detail of it. So help me God. Like I said, I'm telling the truth. And I got all the evidence to back it up. So what ends up happening is we get to a hearing, not in the divorce, in the injunction case. She orders my wife back into the house, overturns Judge Schnoor, Michael Snor's decision, which from what I read in a Florida statute is against the law. During the hearing, she violates all my rights, is completely rude, doesn't let me have any arguments to any of my motions that she's ruling on. Motion denied, motion denied, motion denied. She keeps calling me order out of order when I try to speak or ask a question. It was a complete joke, just like Christy Collins. Completely biased. She had no choice but to grant my continuance after she said she wasn't going to because all of my motions, three of my motions were to... I tried to get the videotapes from CPT, from the child for forensic team, and they gave me these motions to compel. Motions to compel them to give over the tapes. And I said, Your Honor, I need a copy of those videotapes to use as evidence in this courtroom of what my children said in the forensic interviews to prove my case. So she grants me those. She orders CPT to turn over the tapes. She grants a continuance. She sets it out. I said, look, I need a minimum of 10 days to serve subpoenas properly with the sheriff and I need at least five days once I get the videos to see the videos and make my case. You know, I need like 15 days. So she sets it like less than a month out should be plenty of time. Well, first she tries to set it a week out. And that's when I argued that with her about that. <coughs> <coughs> so then I explained to her that it says right in the motion to compel that they gave me that it takes like 30 days to get the, the tape. So I think she actually set it a little more than 30 days out, like 31 days or something. She's such a, such a pain in the butt, this woman. <coughs> well, CPT refuses to give the tapes, violates their order. I file a motion for contempt. Um, gets ignored. She does something really dirty. She goes and sets a hearing on a Friday afternoon. She sets the order for a hearing, which was actually like 10 days out or 11 days out. I forget what it was. Um, two hours before the courthouse closes, giving me no time by the time I get to the courthouse Monday or Tuesday to file the subpoenas and give them to the sheriff and have 10 days to serve, right? So I start filing emergency motions and motions to continue and motions for contempt and all this stuff. More JQC complaints, more motions to recuse. She don't care. She's sitting there beating her chest. Woman won't admit she's wrong. She wants to bury the man. She's friends with all these people. She's in bed with them. It's a mess. It's a complete mess. All my civil and constitutional rights are being violated. And I don't know what to do. So... I finally get to the hearing and uh, at the last minute I file a bunch more motions. I literally had next door neighbors. So I, I let me back up during the 911 call. <clears throat> I was pounding on one of the neighbor's doors. It's, um, I know it's my children. She came over and was actually hugging Junior, took him in a back room and was talking to him. And Junior spilled the beans to her. So she's a witness to all of this. I wasn't even in the room. And then a couple more times I came in the room and she asked him questions at separate times, you know, but a lot of people are witnesses to that. These kids are not lying. I'm not coaching them. This is real. You know, this is true shit. You know, this is the piece of garbage that is my wife and what she's doing to these kids. 
So I file all these motions to have my fiance testify, my neighbors, family members, all kinds of stuff. I show up at the court, what's today, Saturday? This was Thursday, two days ago. I show up at the court, three o'clock in the afternoon, three to five, we have this hearing. <clears throat> part, of the, part of the hearing was for to determine if uh, CPT was gonna turn over the tapes. They were saying that they would not give me the tapes unless I signed some confidentiality notice not to go to the media and not to put them anywhere else or show them to anybody, yada, yada, yada. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to go in this hearing and they're, she's going to order the tapes to be turned over and then we're going to have some more time in another hearing to review the tapes, right? I served subpoenas to DCF again, three officers, including Jessica Scott, Shane Henry, Waldemar Riviera, and they refused to show up. They said, well, you didn't serve properly through the sheriff. We don't have to show up, which from what I know about the law, it doesn't matter. They admitted they got it. When I texted to them, they replied. They have to show up. So I tell the judge that. They're violating a subpoena, DCF. Um, so in the order to turn over the tape, she had also ordered and ordered in the uh, order for hearing that DCF have the investigator that was involved in the investigation um, be at this hearing today and somebody from CPT, the child protection team. So we're in the courtroom, no DCF there, zero. Nobody from DCF is there because they're hiding from me because I had just sent them an intent to sue letter, I forgot to tell you that, uh, in, in federal court for civil rights violations. The procedure with, with suing DCF, you have to sue the state is a little more complicated. You have to give them a, uh, 30 days to respond and you have to give them an intent to sue letter, which I had just done. They don't wanna come near me. They ain't getting up on the stand and let me interrogate them. They know what's coming. So DCF's violating her orders, violating my subpoenas. It's not in the courtroom. I don't have no videotapes. I say, Your Honor, I need to see those tapes. And we got to reset this. She refuses. Very rude in the courtroom. Denies all my motions. Wouldn't hear any of my witnesses. It was a complete joke. They had a member from CPT that was involved in the interviews there to testify. She takes the witness stand. They let me question her. But remember, child hearsay is not allowed. Still, she hasn't granted that. So when I started asking her questions about questions she asked the children, objections. But she did let the questions fly about the twerking naked in front of the children. And this woman, what I believe, and what I have semi-proof of what came out of the detective's mouth, committed perjury. She lies and says, not only did the children never say that to the forensic interviewers, that they never even asked the question. So I went, well, so you guys covered it up again. How about that? So I said, Your Honor, I want those tapes. I want to see what those tapes are because I got a video on YouTube right now from Suzanne Clichetta, the, the head detective for 30 years, Osceola County of Sex Crimes and Child Abuse Division, stating on YouTube, my YouTube video, that it did. Oh, that's hearsay. That's hearsay. Child hearsay. Insubmissible. It's a joke. They covered it up. It was all planned. They all had this plan before we even walked in the courtroom. I, I, I would be willing to bet that the judge was talking to all of them and planned this before we even walked in. So you know what they do? Wait till you hear this. Now, my children have been going to a very high-end charter school that I really had to pull some strings to get them into with their older sister that I've been taking to for a year, all last year and the beginning of this year and now this new school year. And she passed with, you know, flying colors, didn't have to go to summer school. I'm a good dad. I drop her at school, pick her up every day. I got my two younger children that we have in common into that school. They've been going there for two weeks, expensive uniforms, the whole nine yards. You even got them in aftercare. They're in a great situation. My kids are safe with us, with our family, going to a high-end school with their sister. Everything's hunky-dory. I didn't think in a million years she would do this. You know what this judge did? She accuses me. She refuses to give the tapes. She takes this woman's lie, what I believe to be a lie and perjury from CPT, according to Suzanne Clichette's testimony that I have on video on YouTube, to be the Bible. Then she takes it a step further, reading after she read the motion, she knows it's a lie. And she starts reading Jessica Scott's sworn after David penalty of perjury and the motion to show cause for Magigal of all the lies about me. 
And the whole time I'm trying to object to it and, and trying to tell her, Your Honor, if you're going to read this, read what happened and what the outcome was, because you know it was a lie. Read what happened at the motion to show cause hearing, how he dismissed it and how he called the DCF an incredible unorganized organization. And he set our hearing and he dismissed the, the contempt charges. Oh, no, you're out of order. Uh. She covered everything. Completely biased. Holly Derenthal. Holly and Derenthal. By the way, I have a re I had already sent letters to uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, attached them in JQC complaints and showed them to her. Uh, I had already sent her and her judge's assistant an intent to sue in federal court letter, showed them to her in a motion to recuse. She denied it all. So she was already, she wants to bury, this woman wants to bury me under the jail. And that's part of the reason I'm telling this whole story. Because I have a feeling that's, that's, what, that's what she's trying to do. She's trying to get me put in jail. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. <clears throat> so she can silence me. That's the only defense these lying women, compulsive lying women have is to silence the truth. Um, so she turns around and she says uh, that I've coached the children and it's all a lie and I've made all this up. That it never happened. Right? Yeah. I, I made this up, but they're the ones that have said this on Talking Parents that started all this mess. And I did what any responsible father would do, and I took the children to a child counselor. I videotaped it. I ordered in a forensic interviews and the rest of it. But where are the tapes? Where are the videotapes she ordered? So my next process is I'm going to be suing CPT in the state of Florida and all kinds of stuff going on, I'm trying to impeach her as a judge completely. At some point, I want to get these tapes to prove my case. But I have a feeling they're going to mysteriously disappear, these videotapes, or get edited. We'll see. Um... But I have the video, you can see it right now on social media of Suzanne Clichette saying complete opposite of what CPT testified in, on the stand under penalty of perjury too. So somebody's lying and I don't think it's Suzanne Clichette. So the judge says, orders me into a psychiatric evaluation. And this is part of their criminal corrupt bullshit that they do. Because from what I've heard and what I know, you're never going to beat it because it's a corrupt machine. Why would they say that you're perfectly sane? When they can order you to go into classes and get money out of you every week, every month. Or order you medicine that you have to pay for. This is all part of the corrupt machine. She orders me into a psychiatric evaluation to complete within 60 days. She removes my custody completely. Removes the children. Gives an emergency order and child pickup that the mother can go pick up the children from their school. She disenrolls the children from their school. Gives my wife the power to enroll them in a different school. And puts the children back in danger with her. I'm dumbfounded by this. Completely dumbfounded. So I argued in the hearing that she's ru ruining the children's life. You know, she needs to think twice about this. She doesn't know the history. Um, first of all, my wife has no car, no driver's license. And here's what's interesting. So at the first hearing, the judge had asked my wife's two lawyers if she had any friends or family to be a monitor. For, to monitor her visitations. And she said no. That The lawyer said no. She said no. And the judge was dumbfounded by it. And I said, Your Honor, she doesn't have a pot to piss in, in this country. She has no family here. She's from Thailand. The only people she has are her prostitution clients and adult movie cl uh, fan clients that she keeps. And she was letting my three-year-old daughter sleep in bed with them. That's a whole other story. <laughs> so she's already admitted she's got no friends or family in this country to, to even be a monitor. That's why they had to go to the, through the visitation program through the government. So at the hearing two days ago, I brought all this up. And I said, you realize I have a car, I have a driver's license, I have a documented history of taking my daughter to school all last year, this year. I'm a good father. They have uniforms, they're enrolled in school. You are destroying these children's lives and putting them in danger with her, with an unfit parent that's incapable of taking care of them. So she turns around, she asks the other side, is this true, you know? Oh yeah, she doesn't have a car or driver's license, but she uses public transportation and she can, she can get them on the bus. No, she doesn't use, that was the other thing. She, she, and I have it all documented. I have proof of it. I have videos of it. Um, she keeps letting these guys that she meets on the internet transport the kids around with no car seats in their cars, high and drunk. Yeah, nice, huh? So this judge takes the kids away, orders her to go get the kids from the school, orders me in a psychiatric evaluation, covers everything up. So now I'm on my third JQC complaint. I've talked to several lawyers. They said, I got to file an appeal, but an appeal could take years on her decision. They said you could file a motion for reconsideration and try to get a hearing on it, but in front of her, it's never going to happen because 
she's a bias, breaking the law and everything else, it's never going to happen. Um, so I'm determined now and pressuring Governor DeSantis and everybody I can to get this woman to stop violating the Constitution and my civil and constitutional rights and step down off my case. So I can have a lawyer or myself even file a motion for reconsideration, get the CPT tapes and prove that all these women are a bunch of liars. And that's my story, folks. Uh, there's a lot to it that I'm forgetting. Let's see. We're two hours, 15 minutes into this video. It's pretty long, I know. But this is the truth, so help me God. And this is what I'm dealing with. And it's sickening. And so that was another thing I got to tell you. Right before the hearing, they filed a motion to refer, to put me in contempt of court if I lose this hearing and to refer me under three Florida statutes of criminal, I think they're felonies, of false reporting to DCF, false reporting to the police and perjury in the court uh, on my sworn affidavits to get the injunction uh, to refer it to the state attorney's office for prosecution of criminal charges and for her to throw me in contempt of court and throw me in jail. They filed that motion the day before the hearing and I'm pretty sure that she's going to try to set it and try to pursue it. I already filed a response to it and I told her I already went in front of a jury once and I won. Go ahead. I'll be happy to tell the story to my peers as I'm telling you all on the internet right now. This is the truth, so help me God. Something needs to be done. Somebody in government, Ron DeSantis, somebody needs to step in and stop this. Right now, my children are in grave danger with a rogue druggy prostitute and a bunch of women covering her shit that's been going on for over a year. Something needs to get done before my children get seriously hurt. Fly out of the window without a car seat, whatever it may be. Okay, enough. My daughter's going to get molested by one of these perverts. Something's going to happen. And this is sickening that the system would even allow Holly Derenthal to be on the bench doing stuff like this. And this is personal now. I don't only want her off my case. I want her disbarred. I want her impeached, which means fired. Disbarred and impeached means fired. I don't want her a judge. She should not be able to put people's children in danger like this. This is disgusting. If it were a hint of true that I was a danger to the children and I, need, I was crazy, I need to go to a psychiatric evaluation, then why didn't she take my full custody daughter away and my newborn that are in the house right now? Why am I still taking her to school every day? Because I'm not an unfit parent. Because it's a bunch of lies. It's another scheme to take the kids away from me and give them to the mother, just like Jessica Scott and DCF did a year ago. It's a bunch of lies from a bunch of compulsive, lying, man-hating feminists. And it needs to stop now. Please, folks, I have a GoFundMe up. I have several social media accounts. Take my video, cut it into clips, put it all over the internet, put a link to my GoFundMe, put a link to the websites, put a link to the social media accounts. Make this shit go viral. It's in the Osceola County Kissimmee Courthouse. Um, th this, this, I need you to do it for my children. I'm not asking for me. My last video I did like this, you saw I was crying in tears. Well, I've been crying in tears for two days and haven't had much sleep. And I, I, I just don't, I need the public's help. I need the media's help. I need lawyers' help. I need funding for lawyers. I, my, but it's not me that needs help. It's my children. I need you to help my children. Please, folks. Spread this around. Make it go viral. If you have a friend that's a lawyer that can call me and talk to me, if, if you got any sort of help for me, even if you can donate a little bit on the GoFundMe page, I really appreciate it. You're not doing it for me. You're doing it for my kids. I only live on this earth for my kids. That's the only reason I'm here. All right. Over and out, folks.